Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Resonance Arcade. It is Wednesday night, and we are live. You're not, you're not unmuted yet. You're not unmuted yet. <laughs> ha! It's a wave, kinda. Yeah, you can wave, but you're not allowed to say anything until I unmute you. Anyway, hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. As you can see, we have almost a full full team today. Um, we have our our very special Dutch guest, Pim. <laughs> hello, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. And uh, as you can see, we've got Sam back finally after about six weeks of, of no internet. And he's already had a few technical problems, but hopefully he won't disappear in the middle of the show. Yes, behold his horrible face. <laughs> you can actually see him. <laughs> Occasionally he'll lag behind and he'll look a little bit like something from, well, I think the Black Lagoon or something, but I don't know. He's, um, yeah, you, 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 sometimes you pull in funny faces and you can kind of pause is. him <laughs> is that what the creature from the black lagoon does just lags obviously yeah look look on the front of the dvd cover because that's where it came from anyway that wasn't a particularly great way to introduce your show but anyway as a, a, those of you who have not seen us before we are a games talk show we talk about games game development um gaming news etc etc um we normally have guests on at the moment uh, as i said pim is our guest today pim is a web developer and indie game developer i assume yeah yeah and uh, he's he's already told me that he's uh, he's not going to tell us anything about his indie games project. Ooh, secrecy. Yeah. Sorry. Is there, is there anything you can tell us yeah. at all? Well, the reason I'm not disclosing anything is because I use secrecy as motivation. I just want to show a finished project and not halfway from I'm here. So I'm just going on until it's finished. That's admirable. I mean, so, it's, yeah, it's one one of the things that we um, we we said before or i've noticed anyway in recent years is that if you announce too early people get bored of your idea and, and you can easily get bored as well i think and it's it's nice to see that so your is your project a big one is it a little project how long have you been working on it can you give me that kind of that kind of info <laughs> on, you gotta give it's me a something. tycoon game it's a what sorry tycoon game oh tycoon uh, game like a uh... resource management right yeah. okay Interesting. So that could that could be potentially quite complex. Yeah. Mm. You're not <laughs> going to give us any more than that, are you? No, sorry. <laughs> okay, fair enough. So, um, <laughs> uh, as as we've already established, you're also a web developer. You, uh, I presume, in, do that for a living. And you're yeah. uh, again. This is where I came from web development initially, and uh, lose a uh, lose a web developer as well. So you're Still in am. good company. Yeah. Um, uh, for those of you, again, for those of you who haven't seen us before, we do swear a little bit on the show as well, so um, please be aware of that. And if you're easily offended, then shuffle off now. <clears throat> the can nicest I say way fuck we've, now, Chris. You can say fuck as much as you want. Fucking brilliant. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're going out on Twitch and Hitbox today. Uh, we did have a few Twitch issues with the uh, with the recent problems that Twitch had, which we'll be talking about a little bit later on. But let's first of all start with a few questions for our guest. So I'm going to get. I'm going to let Lou go to start off with um well one of the questions that we always like to ask our guests and it gives us a good feel for for who you are is what is your favorite game of all time <laughs> sharp into <The> sims, sims. <laughs> yeah mm, the original the original the whole series i'm still playing it actually you still is three the latest one that the, that's come out or am i a bit behind there it's a four right then. no four because mm, I, I bought my wife three um, she installed it on a laptop and it didn't work so she just didn't play it I've still got it downstairs I keep meaning to have a go myself but I just haven't, haven't had the time so what is it about the Sims specifically as opposed to something like Sim City or some other kind of um, kind of people management game uh, I, I specific, specifically love to build things build houses, build families you can just design your own world and that's pretty awesome right so do you like other games like that? Are you are you into things like Minecraft, for instance, or other crafting, building games? Yeah, no. Well, I've played a lot of other games, but this, the thing about Sims is that you, w once you've built something, you can just continue living their lives, building their home, uh, expanding their home, expanding the family. So you <laughs> just keep engaged. <laughs> I like that expending the family. That's basically what I do in The Sims: is is I set fire to as much things, as much as I can. Yeah, <laughs> I think the usual thing is to get someone in the toilet, then remove the door, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I, um, I used to let them. Uh, I used to let them get stressed to death 
by not giving them any fun objects <laughs> in that house. Because if you didn't have fun enough, they'd die. We clearly are not playing this game right, are we? No, we're, we're masochists. No. We just like to kill people. <laughs> I, I actually really like resource management and like building much. games as well myself. I'm, I'm, I'm really into that prison architect. Um, I haven't played it for a few months because of the... I say really. That isn't, that isn't a definition of really, is it? If I haven't played it for a few months. But I got really addicted to it back then. And I, I love that kind of thing. I love even though it's not quite the sims you're not building a healthy life for somebody you're building a healthy prison that doesn't riot essentially <clears throat> but i like that i like that kind of thing right i'll um i'll ask you our next question then uh so i, I don't know if we've asked anybody this before um if you could be any character in a video game who would you be and why can you repeat that if you could be any character in a video game who would you be and why? Link. Okay. Why? He's, he's cool. He wears a sword. He has a, a magical fairy with him, which is <laughs> awesome. But he's humble, which is what I admire in him. That, that's a good answer. Uh, the, the fairy thing, though, I'm not sure I'd, I agree there because she just <laughs> annoys me. <laughs> Especially in, in Skyward Sword. Every five seconds, she's just <laughs> in your face. <laughs> or whatever. That's Mickey you Mouse. Do, you, you do realise, Pim, of course, <laughs> that if you are linked, that means that every container you open will play a little theme tune <laughs> for about ten seconds. <laughs> it's going to get really, really annoying when you go lift the toilet seat up, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> is there a is there a specific link you're talking about? Because what I find interesting about that choice is that Link is a multi generational. Essentially, an avatar who's, who puts on the, the green outfit and becomes Link in a, in a generation or whatever. So, is there a certain one, or do you just like the idea of Link in any particular time period, like that he wants to be in? Yeah, to just Link as seen in the the lore, not to mm. just a spe 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 specific Link. So, the everyman hero, essentially, that comes from you know from nothing and <laughs> exactly wears, wears a green, red, or blue tunic. Depending on that was always green. No, he wears blue, blue and red as well. If he's blue like, to breathe under breathe underwater and red to go in hot places. But the green one is the is the uniform of the hero of time or the hero of whatever they're calling him. It, you know, it's the legendary hero always wears that green tunic. It's like a, a rite of passage when Link getting that and the Master Sword are pretty much the two most important rites of passage that Link has. He doesn't always get the Master Sword. He doesn't have it in um, Majora's Mask, for example. Do you know, I, I haven't played that enough. Strange little bit of trivia here, but um, I have seen in the last week two people with the Zelda, you know, the the tattoo, the um, the, the three the triangles, Triforce. the Triforce. Yeah, seen two people with that tattoo, both of whom worked in fast food restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> make with that what you will. <laughs> make with that what you will. But yeah, it's just interesting. That I, I keep spotting the tattoo now. It seems to be quite a popular thing to get. It's cool. I like that little symbol. It's such a really simple. Um, Box. It's almost like a logo, isn't it? Because it's more... <laughs> I'd say that's probably more recognisable than the Hylian Shield, which is used on a lot of the covers. Mm. I'd say that, the Triforce Sim, with it being so simple and straightforward, it's just like a... It's like an emblematic symbol of, of that series straight away that you don't need to understand anything to understand what that is, really. You can just see that and you've seen it in all the games. Which I, I like that. Yeah. But the weird thing is that when I first saw that, when well, I saw the kind of... also what makes it so recognisable. Yeah. yeah, when I saw the wing motif, I actually thought it's kind of it's like it looked a bit like a kind of wing, and it looked a bit like you know the on Quake Two the uh, Strog mm. symbol. It looked like that. I thought someone had got a Quake Two tattoo, but not the Quake logo, and I felt mm. really like out geeked. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out it wasn't the case, and I was no. just being really non geeky. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. didn't recognise it. <laughs> Okay, so uh, let's move on. We've actually all played a few games this week. Normally, we, especially for the last couple of weeks, we've been in a situation where I've been too busy to play games, Lou's been too lazy to play games, <laughs> and uh, Sam's not been on to tell us about his uh, his conquests. And uh, Steve's again; he's in the middle of he was in the middle of moving, so we've not had much going on. So it's been our guests that have been have been pushing this part along for us. So saying that, Pim. What have you? Are there any standout games that you've been you've been playing this week? <clears throat> well, I've tried Mass Effect One because it was on sale a month ago. <laughs> so you've you've only just played it then? Yeah. Oh, so it's new to you. It's oh. my first playthrough. Cool. What have, what do you think of it? 
it's pretty awesome. <clears throat> like with the story, with the choices and the battles, and pretty well you... thought out. So <clears throat> I like you, it. Are you playing it on the three hundred and sixty, the PS three, four, PC, PC? No. Yes. Lost him. Oh. PC Master Race. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, your connection's a little bit funny, so we we keep losing you a little bit. So we apologise to the guests for that, but we'll uh, so we apologise to the viewers rather for that. Um, so yeah, I mean, what, what one question I always like to ask people with Mass Effect: Did you go for a Fem Shep? <laughs> yes, I did. Good lads, good lads. I I'm, I went for a <laughs> Fem Shep as well, and I because I played the entire series as a Fem Shep, it, it's really weird when I hear someone refer to Shepherd as a he. Because it's like, what? Oh, all right, yeah, of course. <laughs> Brief and it's, moment it is I played it, I played it as a, a male ship. Of course you did, because you're a misogynist. No, I normally <laughs> play as women in games, but I felt like in an RPG I should play a man, if that makes any sense. No, no, it doesn't, because <laughs> oh, well. no, re all games are role-playing to an extent, surely. Unless you are put in the I, shoes of an anti uh, I don't know, an protagonist. I, I feel um, like in an RPG yeah. you shouldn't be... Or I shouldn't... I don't feel like I should be playing as a female character in a game where I'm meant to be inhabiting the character. Okay. I, don't, game, I, don't, I don't necessarily agree with that because you could play an RPG but you, it doesn't mean that, you, that it's you are the role. You could be taking on a role. You could create that role for yourself. Like when I've played through a few RPGs, I've made. Uh, I like to make a little girl character who is a heavy weapons expert, just because it's funny to me. To have a little girl <laughs> with a huge broadsword twatting massive monsters. I like that, and I can make her into whatever I want. So you can take on a role that you want. That's that's part of the escapism. But I made my Mass Effect character look exactly like, or as close as I could get to looking like me, though. Which is weird because I don't normally do that. I only I've only done that when I played um, the UFC games, and I tried to make the character in that look like me because <laughs> I was I was like, right, want to punch people? That's the only thing. <laughs> um, but every, when I say you, I can't I can't agree with Lou at all because I always choose something like a a red guard or a Khajiit or something. That's, I'm, always, it's, I'm always a red guard, but I play as a red guard in Elder Scrolls games because they have the best skills for what I want to do. Right, so that's why you chose the character, not because yeah. you wanted to inhibit a a male or female character. You just happened to choose it because you're a misogynist. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, no. It's it's one of those things that I I I. I just I look at all the models that I can choose from the the basic you know the, the one of the things these days is you can you know manipulate the face and morph it and make it look very very different to how the you know developers would would have done it years ago but I always look at the basic faces that you get for all of the sexes and all of the races and I kind of choose the one that I like the look of the most it's all it is it's not not it doesn't it's male or female doesn't make much difference to me <clears throat> So I, I want to ask a question about uh, on Mass Effect. How do you feel about the uh, the Mako uh, tank thing? Have you, have you got to that yet? Have you started using it? Oh, it's very fine if you use it, it's right. The vehicle that you have in Mass Effect 1. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Uh, which you... I quite liked it, because I remember... There was too much of it in Mass Effect 1, no doubt, but I was a bit sad that they took it out of 2 and 3 altogether. It, 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 I would have lived with it being there in a lesser capacity because I actually quite like it but even though there's a lot there's too much of it in the first game it's still quite a cool vehicle I think the main problem is is that it's a bit barren isn't it the land that you the, you drive it on that was my, that was my main criticism of that anyway there isn't much to do you're driving to a place usually and there's nothing in between your ship <laughs> and the place yeah I agree with that okay good <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> okay, anything else you've uh, you've played then, Pim? Uh, yeah, I've also played uh, A for Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I heard about this ages ago. I don't know what it is though, so explain it. Uh, it's it's basically just virtual skydiving. All right, okay. <laughs> you jump off a building and you you get to make tricks and do loops and get as much as possible points. All right, okay, and and is it something you you would revisit again, or you, is it not is it not that appealing in the long term? <clears throat> well, it's it's a good it's a cool concept and it's great for high score hunters, but it's, it's not just my thing to jump over and over again to get the best tricks in the highest score. So is is the uh, the amount of tricks that you can do is there, is there a lot of things you can do? Is it quite 
how does it control? What what kind of tricks do you do you have in it? Oh, well, you you've got like four basic tricks, and then you can make all kinds of combos with it, which re result in kind of unique tricks. Okay. Sounds a bit like the kind of the skateboard and snowboarding style games, isn't it? Um, I've I've seen it's actually Oculus Rift friendly as well. <laughs> If Ooh. friendly can be a word for a game where you basically <coughs> jump down an endless shaft, but I might have to try that. I might have to break out the uh, the old Oculus Rift and give that a go because I, I like the sound of that. Actually, and is it is it an indie game? Has it been published by an indie <coughs> publisher? I think it is. Uh, D uh, Joban Games, D Joban maybe. I'm not uh, sure. I I did see it somewhere a while back, but it wasn't it wasn't on my radar. It came out in 2009. I've, I've, I've known about this game for a long time, but I've never played it. Um, it mm. seemed like a bit of a kind of casual gimmicky game. But the Oculus Rift version makes it suddenly a bit more appealing. <laughs> uh, I'd like to put people in it and see what happens to them. Yeah, it'd be a is bit weird, a, that, wouldn't it? Is it in the first-person perspective, then? Because I've never seen it. Uh, it yeah, it's, it's free camera. You can choose bet between third oh, okay. person and first person. Right, so yeah, I think you probably you it would have to force you into first person, wouldn't it? As mm -hmm. as the Oculus, otherwise you'd be a bit that'd be a bit weird, wouldn't <laughs> it? Third, third person, person Oculus, Oculus does not work. It, it feels like you kind you of connect yourself. your character by a stick above it. Mm. Yeah, it's really weird. <laughs> I bet you get yeah. I bet you get some kind of motion sickness from that. Yeah, <clears throat> even Gabe Newell will. <laughs> yeah, with his with his Vive that doesn't have sickness or something. It, it does, doesn't exist in Vive. Wasn't it the Morpheus that said that? Was it, or was it the no, Vive? No, it, it was Gabe Newell for the Vive said that 100% of people who used it didn't get motion sickness, which just sounds like a made-up statistic, really. Because hmm. there was only three people that used it. <laughs> yeah, just, just him that used it. <laughs> it's not really a big enough testing for the ones in. All right, so Sam, since you haven't been uh, around for a while, we'll, we'll come on to... Uh, I'm sure Pim's got some other... Uh, some other games you can talk about, but what have you what have you played then? Since we haven't been, had you on for well, a few weeks, as as soon as I got the internet connection back up, I was like, Hotline Miami Two is getting downloaded, which is what I did today. Good and I played it for a couple of hours. Not, I've only done the first couple of levels because um, it's whoa, it's so much like it's a kind of game where you have to have played the first one because it's so much harder than the way the first one starts out. It already expects you to know what you're doing. Like, there's really not much. Um, Hand holding in it, it's the first few levels are quite tough quite quickly. Um, All right. Whereas the first game, we had like, let you get used to it a little bit before you had to get going. Whereas this one's just like, no, you're in and you're fighting off loads of dudes with shotguns. Like, now get on with it. <laughs> it's cool, I really like it. It's hard as and it's enjoyable, just like the first one was. It, it does some interesting um, things with the mechanics as well, in that there's certain characters who can't do certain things. Like, there's one scene that I played where the character can't actually kill anyone. If he picks up a gun, he unloads it and drops it on the floor again <laughs> which is very interesting don't, so you're going to go through the level without yeah, well, yeah, it's just like you play as many different characters and the characters have different weaknesses it's not just the masks anymore there's characters who are li literally forced to play a certain way you know I don't think the masks made that much of a difference in the first game I, I mean I liked the, the one where doors would kill people you still was, have the masks so that was the only one that really did much for me mm. the masks are still there but there's just They've, they've tried to add more layers to it with certain characters. Yeah. So you, uh, was it you that said you'd played that as well, Lou? Yeah, yeah, I've been playing it. <clears throat> I'm going to have to get it. I'm gonna, it's, it sounds good to me. It is um, cool. I've, I've only just started it, and I'm going to get into it more, but uh, that's my new purchase, app, the first new game I've bought for quite a while. I'm going to get Bloodborne when it comes out, but it's not actually available till tomorrow. Yesterday. Unfortunately. It's, I've, I've rang up a few shops to see no one's stocking it till tomorrow. Oh, right. Oh, oh, you're, you're out in bloody... Out in the sticks now, aren't you? So they don't even know what computers are down there. Don't hear me, sister. You're just playing with bits of wood. <laughs> <laughs> What's a capacitor? Is it like a tractor? Sorry. <laughs> Sam, what do you think to the story in Hotline Miami 2 then so far? Because it is very... Uh, sto oh, God, sorry. It's that, that, that <laughs> the first time fun. Lou's van's made an appearance <laughs> for a while as well. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, well, there's a story, there's quite a lot more story in My Mammy 2. That yeah, I've, I've only, again, I'm right near the beginning, so it's, and I, I, I spent like the first game, the story doesn't really get revealed to you until kind of near the end anyway, so it's very confusing and, and, and strange at the moment, uh, but I like it a lot. It's 
they seem to they seem to be doing more of a story. That seems clear. Like it, it, they're setting it up. That there's more going on with the multiple characters thing as well. I'm guessing that they're going to have some sort of interplay with each other later on in the game. I don't know yet. Uh, I'm enjoying it. Uh, getting my ass kicked by it, which I quite like it when a game does that, but doesn't do it in a way that. It pisses me off. Well, the, 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 one of the things about the first one is, I, and I'm assuming he's kept this this in because it was a positive criticism that people made for it, is that it's back into the action immediately. Yeah. It doesn't load. Yeah. It doesn't take ages for you to get in there. And I think that that's one of its major selling points. Yeah, Definitely. same thing. You put you tap the R key and you start the level again, and it's like yeah. instantly, you, oh crap, I've died. I'm going to do it again. And you get you start to kind of develop muscle memory for the levels. I mm. think that's the way you master them. Is you mm. you kind of get you get very smooth and and tick the level out in a really swift, liquid kind of motion. Yeah, Weird essentially, things. it's gestures, isn't it? Uh, it's, mm. Well, on 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 mouse and keyboard, I imagine it's different from on the spanner pad. Spanner pad, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Have you played it, Pim? Have you played um, Hotline Miami? <coughs> no, I haven't. Is it your your kind of game? Is it something that's on your radar? It doesn't sound like it. No, it's, oh, it sounds like it. the, the opposite of The Sims, really, isn't it? It's you, <laughs> yeah. you go into rooms and kill. The, well, actually, no, that's not the opposite of The Sims for us. <laughs> <laughs> no. so Pim is trying to raise a family, and yeah. Hotline Miami is trying to kill the families. <laughs> kill everyone's family. There's not fact. not much of that going on. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> So, uh, okay, right, so I, I actually logged on to PSN the other week uh, and I saw you playing a game that I've been playing, Sam. Yeah. Because um, I, I started playing it with uh, with the missus, uh, The Last of Us Remastered. Played it with her as in she's sort of spectating. Yeah, she's watching that while I play it. And um... to, be, to be fair, <laughs> it's the kind of game that you can spectate because there's so much dialogue as you play in as well, like it's quite... It's very narrative driven, isn't it? It's not just she forgot. I was, she forgot she was watching me play a game at one point. Um, mm. Apart from there was one particular. I played it on hard. I've got got it on the hard setting, and um, there's, there's one particular. I, I was this close to putting it on the. There's two more than that as well, isn't there? There's hard, then there's like Uber, yeah, and then I, Uber, uh, Uber hard or something. If Survivor difficulty gets rid of the listen mode, oh no! So oh. you can you kind of <laughs> if, if screw you don't, that. If you, if you've never played the game before, I would not recommend that. Once you know the levels and you know the layout, yeah. like I've just recently finished it on Grounded, which has got no hood and you've got no bullet counter unless you change a weapon, so you've got to count your bullets yourself and stuff <laughs> as you go in, and you've got no health bar and anything. It's pretty goddamn hard, I'll be honest with you. But yeah, anyway, carry on. Um, yeah, anyway, I started playing it and I've maybe played about two hours, three hours. It took a mm. while, it takes a while to get going. It takes it a, a while for it to, to start kicking in, and it's got quite a lot of quick time events, which you know I've got a problem with in games, and, and I know that's the way that AAA games are going, but it, they do my head in. Just just don't put them in. Just 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 show me a, a cinematic. I don't want to go X occasionally, you know? Unless there's a cult like Kojima does with his, you know, R2s uh, in the Metal Gear which, games. Which are optional. Yeah, which are optional. I don't mind that. That's a cool little Easter egg type thing. But if it's if it's to move it on a little bit unless it's more complicated and you're doing a lot of things to to get past a particular section and there are consequences mm. to it like in the walking dead games i just take it out it's superfluous and pointless but anyway right. on top of other that other than that other than that how have you finding it so far okay so far <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna commit any more than that so far because it's only been a couple of hours in. Um, no, no, I agree. Few, it took me a while to really get into it as well. There's a few characters that I'm not so keen on, um, and there's also the stealth aspect. I really like the fact that some of the enemies can hear only hear you. Some of them see you and and detect you in different ways. And it's really there was one particular moment where I was trying to crawl through some kind of shopping mall or something and there was a load of clickers around and I only had one shiv that I could make. So mm. I, I used a shiv to kill one of them and then I was like, how do I get the rest of them? I can't figure out how to kill them. And I, I died about a billion times trying to get through them. Um, but I just eventually ended up just crawling really really slow until they get through the level because they don't hear you when you go dead slow there's um there's i'll give you one one tip and you, unless you don't want it there's one tip for getting rid of, of killing bad guys um if you've got a brick or a bottle handy if you equip it when you when you're in within throwing range a little green circle will appear over them hmm. if you do that it doesn't work with clickers you have to have a, a bat or a crowbar or something but if you throw it at them run up then run up to them one hit will kill them with that one melee hit. Uh, what about the two befores? 
to, can you kick, kill the clicker? You can, around? but not if, if the clicker. If you've got, if they don't detect you, then yes. But if they're running at you doing that arm flaily thing, then no, they'll just bat it aside and bite you. The 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 animation's very good. It makes you very nervous. Like when they're when they're flapping around, like they're flailing around in front of you and they're doing all the mm. spazzy stuff. It's like it's it's really you think that they've heard you quite a lot of the times, and it's like. I'm, I, I've held my breath quite a lot trying to go through places. I wasn't scared necessarily. I know it's a horror type game, but I, I, I liked that. I like again, I thought that was pretty cool. But I'm hoping there's more to it. It still feels a little bit like I'm creeping through a section, then I get a cinematic as a reward, kind of, and then I creep through another section, uh, and I don't. It feels a little bit like I'm just looking at beautiful scenery, you know. There is there is an element of that to it, and it is kind of because it, it's quite story driven. You're sort of going along for the ride of enjoying um, Ellie, in particular Ellie. You, you meet quite a lot of characters on the way, but Ellie and Joel sort of getting to know each other and the barriers coming down and all that kind of stuff. Um, the, yeah, the the, the the scenarios in which you take on infected and, and the human enemies as well, they just become more specific to the location that you're in. So in that regard, it doesn't change that much. But yeah. I found it engaged all the way through, and it gets more hectic and it gets more difficult as a game should do. But it gets more, it gets more fun. I think as it goes on, it starts out quite slow, but as you get into bigger areas and you get better at using the weapons and crafting the things that you want to craft and using your Molotov cocktails and stuff like that. There was what there was one up. bit that I found a little bit frustrating. It was right at the end of that shopping mall area, and it was it was telling me it was directing me to a place. And I can't remember how it directed me to get there. It was the end of the level. Um, it, there was no like indicators on the map or anything like that. But when I got to the area, it told me to press the look button, whatever it is, R uh, one, whatever it is. And then I looked at this area and I looked. It looked directly at a zombie, and I was like, right. I see the zombie, and then I couldn't get, there was nothing, there was no way I could go, but I had to pull a ladder down from somewhere, but I had to get rid of the zombie first, but I didn't realise that, I thought yeah. I could, and, and it, it for, again, it, that's taking the freedom away from me, and I want the freedom to go, to do pull that down and make that mistake, you know, that yeah, annoys the, me a little bit. The, the two big criticisms I'd level at the game is, what you just said there, is that you want, you might be inclined to, you might, your inclination might be to play completely stealthily, but there are certain sections of the game, and I'll warn you of this now, and you won't know where they're coming the first time you play through it, where it makes you fight because it's going. It's got a point to the narrative that right. that section has to end in violence. I um, see, see, that this... to give you, to, so you think you can stealth through certain sections and you can't. You can stealth away, but you have to get in into the ship. Otherwise, so is, enemies is... will keep respawning. That when, when, when the narrative is directing the gameplay, I have a problem with that. When the narrative is part of the gameplay, you know, and... Um, when it's when it, you, you can well exactly what you just said there if it's telling me that i have to be violent i'm not into that and i probably yeah. get a bit annoyed with this i think by it, the end of it it. Do, it it doesn't do it all the time it does it in a couple of places uh, there's one particular one that annoyed me and i won't spoil it for you or unless you want me to and the other thing that i do the thing that, I, that i'm not too keen on um and it's it's a pretty small gripe but it, it, it breaks the immersion of a game that is so well presented and so well put together is that the um, the enemy AI does not detect your your partner? Like they never. If Ellie could be stood right in front of a bad guy, and they won't give a shit about her, they only attack. They will attack her if you get spotted, but they won't attack her if they see her and don't see you. She's invisible to them unless you get spotted. And when certain situations where that happens, is like that seems quite silly. There was I a, think it'd be more annoying if she kept catching the zombies' attention. I mean, exactly, it's it's, yeah. it's the lesser of two evils, really. It is the lesser of two evils, but I, yeah, I did notice that quite a lot of the times. In fact, we we sat there criticizing it, me and Sal, when we were playing it, going, "She just ran into that zombie. She just blatantly ran into it and went." It's not very heroic, though, Chris, is it? What? Go, kill the little girl, not me. No, <laughs> no I, she's I, there. I didn't her. say they should kill her. I'm just saying that it they, they need to do a bit more work in that area. I think it was a, yeah. for, for the st standard of game. It is that's not really acceptable, you know. <clears throat> Considering how good reviews it got, how, you know, it's a ten out of ten game, isn't it? In most most places, nine yeah. out of ten, ten out of ten. It's been well received by the critics. That that's shoddy in my eyes. Yeah, that's, that's those are the those are my my two complaints, and they're not insignificant complaints. But I enjoyed it so much that I can. It's the same with any game that I love. There's always stuff I can tear into it. But if the good outweighs the bad enough, mm. I I feel good about it. 
I don't get me wrong. I quite like the fact that I'm scavenging. I quite like the fact that I'm that, that there's a decent story behind it. I like the main characters so far. Most most of the time, I'm still not warm into Ellie that much yet. But I've, she's literally only really just been introduced to in the game. Mm. Um, but yeah. Mm. Oh, I shall continue with it, put it that way. I still yeah. yet to play I'd still really like to play that game. I'm trying as much as possible to avoid spoilers, but... I've I've managed to do it so far. I don't think it's the, that hard now. The spoilers are kind of percolating through the... the Actually, of um, the... has Steve got a PS3? Because it is he does, me, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah. I've, well, I've got... Because I got a, a copy of the PS4 remastered version when I got mine, so I could actually send you my ps3 version of it for you to play because i'm not using it and i don't need it i've got two copies of the game now essentially i think steve has a copy himself i will get to play it oh, just, you can, uh... so you could play it now if you want yeah yeah so right. um pim have you played any other games then we'll move on to uh, another game <laughs> well, i've also played sim city 2015 all right is, is that new is that newish it's it's the newest version of sim city so i mean the the year on the game doesn't always mean that it's just come out. I I don't follow these kind of games, so is it brand new this like this year or was it last year's? It's it's actually last year's, but it's called 2015. So what's the main prem? What's the difference? And the last Sim City that I played was on the SNES back in the nineties. <laughs> Sim City two thousand, I'll be something like that. And I remember you had to <laughs> have to place commercial, industrial, and residential areas. You could place it was all just on a square grid, square grid, not an hexagon grid. Or and, was it uh, isometric? Uh, it might have been slightly isometric, but it wasn't full on. You can't be slightly isometric. You're either isometric or not. <laughs> no, you know what? The one that I played wasn't. It was top down. If it was square, then it was the original SimCity. Yeah. Okay. Top well, top down cartoon. Pretty easier. sure it was still on the SNES though that I played it. Um, anyway, and you could place um, you could place police stations, and then upgrade all of your different things, and then build roads, and you could send Godzilla in as well to destroy the city, which I didn't do. I wasn't into that. <laughs> So how different are the, the modern SimCity games? Uh, it's basically new graphics and a new engine and that's it. It's the gameplay is exactly the same. Right, so they haven't enhanced that at all? No, it's it's exactly like Chris Sawyer once made, made it. Right. What do, have you played um, City Skyline? Or Not City? yet. Um, a lot of people are talking about that. I mean, that's getting a lot of press at the moment, and it's basically a lot of people are saying this is I've bought what SimCity should do. Yeah, I, I'd probably give that a go to be honest, because it sounds like people are preferring that over the EA tainted version of SimCity. Mm. Well, that that most recent SimCity game was plagued by launch issues that made it put um, hit the gaming headlines for a while. I'm guessing that's all been fixed now. With patches and whatnot but it had a very messy release didn't it yeah it was like it, it had like you had to play it online and um mm. and like it was a some kind of a persistent world you had like little blocks of city area to build your city in it was strange but uh yeah it did have a lot of problems and it was it was kind of one of the big the big kind of sticking points for ea like that was one of the big parts where everyone started to think oh, god ea actually are quite evil <laughs> uh, I, just I want to say when they started to think it, it sort of cemented it more than uh, made people start to think it. It was already an ongoing thing, mm, that wasn't it? I guess so. I just want to say a quick hello to some people in chat who have been engaging with us, but we've been ignoring them. Unfortunately, we've uh, because of the Twitch problems this uh, this week, we haven't got the 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 same kind of chat monitoring as as we normally do. So that's why we haven't seen you. Uh, but hello, Mr. Cowbunger, if you're still in there, and uh, Creeksy Boy and Alan John D. And I think uh, Potatoes in there as well, and a few other people. Um, what does my shirt say? Somebody says I can't read it backwards. Go High on. school teen goes. Back in time, gets seduced by his mother and invents rock and roll. Nine eighty five. Synopsis for the original. Shawshank Redemption, isn't it? That yeah, oh. that's it. Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> it's actually Dumbo. <laughs> Dumbo, the original Dumbo Disney film. And uh, I, we'll put that out in chat then. If you think you know who, what that is, then go You're for it. Going to see what mine says. Shit. <laughs> that's easy to read. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. I like the little. I like the the faces on them. Mm. <laughs> Is that, one of, about it, yeah. is that one of your t-shirts that you designed, are you? No, that's one I bought. Cool. <clears throat> uh, la, 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 la. Right, so, next, Sam, go back to something you played. We'll, we'll talk to Lou in a minute, because we've got other games um, to talk about we've we played well, together. 
this is a game that I'm sure we've all completed the one player campaign of and I'm not sure if any of you's uh, but I don't know about you Pim I know we've talked about it on the show before um, all of us regular dudes um, uh, Portal 2 I've been playing the co-op with that with my sister recently and obviously playing that's obviously us sat in the same room together not playing it with some stranger online or whatever and it's actually been really really good fun it's a great I additional could... version of the game I've been trying to play. I was trying to play through that with my my wife a while back, and uh, she it wasn't as easy for her to follow. She you know she liked the fact that Stephen Merchant was in it, and it you know it was a bit it was a bit interesting. But there's also quite a lot of she didn't get the puzzle. She didn't get the portal thing. She didn't understand not necessarily understand, but she couldn't get her head round the fact the fact you fired a portal in one place and you could see out of another place, so you could see yourself. She just mm-hmm. did, it just didn't work for her somehow, and I'm, I've heard other people who said the same thing. So we kind of didn't keep playing it because of that. Because I was like, I was running through the puzzles because I've played it like six times through, and she didn't really know. She just thought I was just taking a piss. Isn't it, isn't it a completely different game to the single player though? It's not like it's not the same story, is it? It's different. No, it's, com- it's completely different. Yeah. They actually, they, there's Glados is in it. Uh, I've not encountered Wheatley yet, and we're quite far into it. We're up to the. Um, what are they called? The sort of swirly gravity bridge things, not the gravity the uh, light, light bridges. bridges. Not the light bridge. No, the no, the gravity swirl. tunnels. You can change oh, right. gravity tunnels. We're up to that section, so we've not got to any of the goos yet. The, you know, the acceleration goo or the bouncy goo. So we're quite, we're supposed to be quite far into it, but I don't know how close we are to the end because there's no indication. But that is it. And she's she's talking about she makes little slide digs still at shell. But what's good is it, it's very specific to the co-op team, like there's a blue robot on it. You play as two robots, right? So there's a blue robot and an orange one. I'm player one and I'm the blue one and Lucy's player two, she's the orange one. And let us will say, blue, I, you know, she'll then say something great about blue. Totally arbitrarily, because she doesn't know which one of us has solved the puzzle or she doesn't know anything that we've said to each other. But she'll just try and make digs at one against the other. Like there was one time when I died. And uh, she said, "Orange, I won't tell Blue that that, that you like made that happen." Basically, and this, she she always making sly little digs to try and make us not work together because she's glad us and she's an arsehole. But it's uh, <laughs> so the the, the, the humour of the writing is still there in, in the uh, co-op, which I'm so happy about because I thought they might leave it out because we're obviously talking to each other all the time, going right. We've got to get this one over here and go that over there. You jump down here and I'll put that there as you fly through. Because it's all you know. You've got to do teamwork to get through the puzzles together, but all of the good stuff that you love about portals there. Plus, you played it with another person. I, and you've uh, got to I, use four portals instead of two, and it's, it's awesome. I started playing it with some someone, and I, it was either you, Sam, or you can play it cross-platform as well. So you, I, we you could can. have played it on PS3, and I could have been on PC, which I think is amazing, and it doesn't happen often enough. That's pretty cool. Um, and I, I was trying to get to play it with you. I don't think we did, but I played. I think it with the reason we didn't is because you need to be able to. I think you need to be able to chat to them, and I didn't have a headset for my PlayStation. Ah, oh, right. I, I, I did play it with somebody though, and it could have been Lou or Steve, one of the two. Um, it was me. Not sure, but yeah, I, uh, I I've played it with someone, and I thoroughly enjoyed the the small amount of time I did get play the co-op. But I wish I'd pl- I want to play it all the way through. I really do mm. want to play it all the way through. Uh, yeah, um, maybe I'll let you play it with me sometime, Chris. Oh, that's really nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I highly recommend it. If you enjoyed the one play game, there's no reason not to enjoy the co-op. It's great. It's awesome. <laughs> oh, I think it was with Steve, and I think I remember it crashed a few times, or it was when I was having problems with my PC and I was hosting or something, or something like that. There's Lou's cat. Yep. Oh, just keeps walking past. Uh, just ignore her every I week. Do. Yeah. It's animal cruelty. I'm going to report you to the RSPCC. Peace. The Royal Society for the Protection of Cats. <laughs> cruelty to cats. Peace. Cruel. Yeah. Prevention of cruelty. Oh, I don't know. Shut up. Um, <laughs> okay. Right. So let's uh, move on to Lou. Apart yes. from apart from the game we've both played, what else have you played uh, this week? Right. So the only, the other game that I've played, I, I played. Um, I mentioned on Saturday, I believe, that I played Chaos Reborn which is um, Julian Gollop's latest outing in turn-based strategy. Mm-hmm. Um, really enjoying it still. I haven't played it with anyone yet. I just played it against the AI. Um, but I'm looking forward to playing Steve because he's also got it. Um, I've also been playing Hotline Miami 2. Um, I've got a bit further in that. Not much more to say about that. The other game that I've been playing um, in the same Julian Gollop vein is a game called Xenonauts which is essentially uh, a remake of the original XCOM 
uh, UFO defense. Is it actually kind of, a, like a, a spiritual remake? Then it is, is a completely spiritual remake. Yeah, so it's basically the same game, but with uh, their own graphics, some slight tweaks to the um, some of the layouts um, and the setting. It's in 1979 instead of 1999, which is what the original game was set in. So it's actually got a bit of a retro vibe to it. Right. Um, that's, that's made it appeal to me even more. I didn't realise it was a, a remix. I I don't fancy playing the original XCOM because it's old now and I, I, it's kind of going into an old control system that will probably frustrate me in some way because there's better ones now, you know? The, you can play the original XCOM with something called Open XCOM, which is a very, very nice modern version of it, but it's okay. still got all the retro graphics, but you can kind of have high res. But Xenonauts, if you want to play a modern game that has the same gameplay is essentially the same gameplay it's not even essentially it's exactly the same kind of gameplay basically hmm. with some slight tweaks but it is very much a spiritual successor in the way that the newer XCOM games were not right so it I keeps stuff like the time units the the isometric perspective the square grid and things like that 100% I'm going to get it then because it, I've it's been it's I've been that close to buying it you know I've been nearly clicking on the buy button a number of times and I've been thinking is it just XCOM like uh, the the new XCOM you know is it just kind of I didn't realize it was an old I warn you that it has the same learning curve and the same difficulty as well That's it fine. is a hard game to get into I, I don't mind hard games you know I've said that a few times I, I prefer a game that challenges me considerably than one that doesn't challenge me at all yeah this will confuse you for a lot of the time because you've got to be, you've got to manage the base, you've got to manage your soldiers, you've got to manage all of your weapons and supplies, the research, and it doesn't kind of hand it to you on a plate like the modern XCOM games do. But you've played you've played the modern XCOM game. Yeah, it's Is a very it... simplified version of XCOM. All right, I'm going to say because you do all simplified. of that in that, but yeah, it's nowhere it near. It's fairly as simple. Yeah, it's nowhere near as complex. All right, okay. Well, I think I'll grab it. I'm up for that. Up for that. It is. It is very good. It's um. It's very refreshing to play a game. Multiplayer. Um. I don't know. If it Possibly. is, that'd be cool. That'd be a there, cool. There, move again, there are there are solutions for that. You can play um UFO 2000 if you want to play it, multiplayer XCOM, original style. But uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Cool. And the other game I've been playing is a game that obviously you want to talk about. So I'll let you. Well, talk about that one. I was going to let you talk about it and join in, but yeah, um, we oh. we after a recommendation from Matt Chellen, our guest on Saturday, uh, Lou and I downloaded a game called Savage Lands. Savage Lands. Savage Lands. And it's basically a fantasy kind of open world. Well, open on an island, um, pretty empty world, but it's it's a survival game. So it's like a Rust or a. Um, don't starve, that kind of thing. But it's a 3D game. It's it's obviously written in something like Unity. It's got that kind of feel to it. Um, it, it, it also feels a little bit like a cross between, like I said, don't starve difficulty. Because there's, honestly, we, we've recorded about two hours of our gameplay that I'm going to upload to YouTube. But it, um, we, we, the amount of times we spent flailing around trying to find berries, trying to find the, the like wolves to kill, so we could like circle around a wolf and stab it to death, so we could get some meat to survive for the next five seconds. It's, it, it was uh, pretty, pretty kind of savage, wasn't it? And then, and basically, we play, There's a few bugs in it. It's early access, but there was one point where we where Lou died, and he spent about twenty minutes getting back to me, or he was going the wrong way, and then started coming back to me again the other way, and then I died. Um, I don't know, maybe five minutes after you got back and then I ended up spawning on the other side of the island somewhere and I just I gave up. I spent about an hour trying to find you, didn't I? So Yeah, I just want to quote Steve on this because uh, Steve's meant, uh, I've been asking about it and he, he, he <laughs> quoting Steve looks like a cheap Skyrim. Yeah, it, and it, it, kind it of feels does. like it's it. It's like survival mode in a cheap Skyrim. That's exactly what it is. But I, I mean, you said you you said on on Facebook in that message uh, thing that that you didn't think I enjoyed it. Now I got frustrated towards the end because I was a little bit like, right, this is just pointless now. Um, it's not fun on my own. I could start another camp, but what's the point? You know, I want to find you so we can continue to build our our little village. Yeah. But we need to we're, basically. You could probably there's a, there's a resurrection pole or something that you can build. But out of the one that we created was bugged, so we put all of the ingredients in, it and then it just didn't work. So it seems to decay that thing, by the way. 
Oh, I noticed it... that I started to build another one and it decayed, so I think maybe that's what it is. So you have to keep killing skeletons to add more yes. skulls to it. Right, so yeah. like the campfire then a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. So what, one of the things we did as we were running trying to find wolves to kill is um, we, we, we started hitting rocks and stuff with, with hammers to get other you know stones and stuff out of it so we could build a fire quickly because we didn't have the ingredients on us so it's 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 brilliant with friends because you can bounce off each other and go right we need to go and do this we need to go and do this we need to go and do this and uh but i think on your own it's a little bit tedious but i think i think with a friend i'm quite yeah i wouldn't it. i wouldn't recommend playing it on your own i don't, I don't think it, it has enough in it to make it enjoyable but when you have a friend along it suddenly it feels quite cool especially the first time i love games like exploration games that you play for the first time with a friend there's something mm. very cool about that it's like this this you're both on this adventure together even if it's massively multiplayer online games um the fir first tentative steps out into the world with a friend are really cool i i 100 agree and uh i said i when i i played it maybe about an hour two hours before um only because so I think we're having problems with Twitch, by the way. Everybody, we, th we might move to Hitbox full-time because Twitch is just screwed at the moment. Um, if you've got having any problems with streaming on Hitbox as well, hitbox.tv forward slash Resonance Arcade on there. Um, so, yeah, we've... Um, we, we What were we doing? Forgot what I was saying then. You were playing it for a few hours before. Oh, yeah, I was playing it for a few hours. I figured out some of the basics, like what... I mean, it took me it took me about an hour to figure out that I could punch trees or punch bushes in order to... if When I ran out of... Um, axes and things like that because all the all the weapons have durability on them as well and it's it's you know it gets a little bit like right i've run out of weapons what the hell do i do then you can figure out you can actually find weapons randomly around the map but you have to go to certain places and then i started finding things like little villages that had been knocked down when i was running around trying to find lou again and then and then lou found a, a platform with a dragon on it and you know it's a there's more to the game obviously than we we gave it credit for initially but I think you have to do things, like in Don't Starve, you have to do things in a specific way, at least for the first few nights and, and days, in order to survive. Otherwise, you're going to die very, very quickly. <laughs> but yeah, I liked it. I think I'm, I want to play it again with you. Yeah, I do as well. I, I really I, enjoyed it. I think I'd like to start again and kind of get oh, out. I just got going. I've, I've nearly finished our forge and everything. Well, if you've got the resurrection pole and, and I'll resurrect near you, then I'll go for it. But if I'm not, I'm not trying to find you again. It was boring. Like I spent an hour running, <laughs> just watching my health, my hunger and my health go down gradually, and eventually getting murdered. This is by survival, a Chris. This isn't a game. This is about living. If it was about survival, I'd just, if right, if it wasn't a game, then I would have just built another bloody fire and started my own village again. But that wasn't fun. That's not fun. Playing it with a friend and the amount. Of, uh, anyway, move on. Let's You're move no on. No bear grills, are you? Well, it's about survival. One of you <laughs> killed the other one and ate him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And was, I wasn't sure if you could um, you could find your own corpse and loot it as well. We didn't figure that out, did we? No. Because you when you die, you've got quite a few items on you, and the uh, you... kind of finding the village that you built on, finding your own corpse in the wilderness is going to be impossible. Yeah, it's very disorientated in the world as well. Even though there's some distinguishing features, it's still very difficult to find. It's most of it's trees and bushes. And the, the landscape changes as obviously the um, as you knock things down and chop trees and stuff. Yes, right. So let's move on. Let's move on to our list section. Unless uh, anybody has any other games that they played. Hang on, we're not there yet, Lou. Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> has anybody has anybody else got any other games that they have played before we move on? No. All right. Fair yep. enough. Whatevs. Whatevs. So. The way of the exploding list. <laughs> was that what was that? Is that like the little twinkly dust settling? Yeah. After the explosion. See, Sam gets it. <laughs> the Michael Bay so... fireworks that come off. The <laughs> I not wanted to write list on my fingers with a pen, but I didn't get time. Oh, someone has already come up with a suggestion. We've got we've Ooh. got people who know what this section is without me having to explain it. Most inspiring gaming moment. Inspiring. Ooh. 
inspiring. inspiring. So, uh, sorry, I'll explain this to Pim because Pim may be a little bit left in the dark here, right? <laughs> yeah. So what, what this section is, right, We, um, the way of the exploding list is essentially our first couple of shows, we actually did two hour shows on lists and it was a bit, you know, predictable. So we've decided to just have a 10, 15 minute section about a list. So the lists are things like your favourite protagonist, most inspiring gaming moment in games, most interesting scenery, you know, best storyline, whatever you want to talk about, worst uh, worst sidekick, that kind of thing. So again, uh, we I always offer the the guest to to come up with something if you can come up with something off the top of your head. If not, we could go with uh, Mythalaw's suggestion in chat, or I have some other suggestions as well, and we could put Mythalaw's down on a. I think that's a good one. Okay. Unless 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 nobody can think of something, I've kind of got one in my head. That I've got some stuff in my head as well. Should we go with Inspiring, inspiring Game inspiring. Moments? Yeah. Let's go with it then. So, go on. I haven't got anything so far. Um, on, Alright, I'll, I'll go first. One moment that, um, that is an inspiring moment in terms of it was one of those moments that, um, that kind of made me sort of go, wow, this is quite impressive and, and cool. And by today's standards, it really wouldn't be. But um, the first time that you get out of the of Kokiri village in uh, Ocarina of Time, and you go into Hyrule Field and you realise that this is the 3D open world world, you know, and it, it, I hadn't seen anything like that before because I played that game, the first time I played it was on somebody else's N64 because I'd had a Mega Drive and then a PlayStation. And there was nothing that, that had achieved that that mm. I'd ever seen. I'm, and the I'm first time I got there, it was quite, it was like, wow, this is so impressive and huge and and it, for its time, beautiful to look at. <laughs> it looks really blocky now, but it was like so colourful and it was so physically realised and it was all there for you to go and run around it and explore. And that. It was pretty, was pretty inspiring. It was awe-inspiring, shall we say. It was cool. Really I good agree. And I had the exact same experience as soon as I went into that field. I was like, how far does this go? What is out there for me? How many secrets are there to uncover? I couldn't wait. And then I realised it wasn't that big, but it was still no. awesome at the time. <laughs> the same the same thing happened to me with uh, Mario 64 as well. When I played that, again, the in, just, the, in, just the, the bit where you start, you start on some sand in a... Uh, or a path, rather, in like the, the, the front of the castle area. And then you can just explore the front of the castle before you even get to find any enemies or go and do anything. And you can swim around in the moat, and you can, you know, you can go get in and out of some pipes, and that. it's just cool. It's just cool to see that kind of thing. One for me was um, talking about XCOM earlier on. When I first realised in that game that you could pretty much destroy the entire landscape, so. It suddenly dawned on me that I wasn't just in a map that, that had been kind of created by the the person who designed the game or procedurally generated, but I was able to influence that map. I could shoot through a wall to get into a building, make my own entrance into a building. That was really cool. That was a kind of moment where it was like, I can play this game how I want to play it. Mm. I'm not being I'm not being railroaded like a lot of games would do. Mm. So I What's really it? I really like that. What year was that release? That game. Oh god, to yeah, early the, 90s I think. So um, that's, for, for, for its time, that's really ahead of its it time. It was on the Amiga. To do that kind of stuff, it's like you just... Destructible environments is still something that games mostly don't even touch nowadays. That's pretty um, cool. I didn't know that, that could happen. Um, I've got yeah. quite a few. Just Go writing on, them down so I don't forget. I, I've, I, again, Pim, feel free to jump in here if you've got any that, that stand out. I um okay so I'll 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 say uh, what you well, you just said um, scenery then that just made me think of Red Faction the first one I know you've mm. got problems with it but I I love the fact that I could blow my, a hole in a wall and I could blow I could keep blowing holes until I could ke come round on myself and I could I know it wasn't amazing but it was amazing to me I loved it I loved the fact that you could do that. And you could go around things, you know, you could like, if there was a locked door, you could just blow a hole in the wall and go around it. Brilliant. But the, but the, the designer of the game would put that destructible wall near the locked door so that you could do that. It wasn't a case of you making your own rules. It was a case of the game designers put some extra... It's almost like a secret door, really. That's all it was in, in Red Faction. It didn't feel like it was something you were doing. It was just an alternate, alternate route that had already been planned for you. And therefore, it wasn't the same freedom that I felt in XCOM. Do you know what I mean? I I felt that freedom though. They they tricked me well. Right. 
I, <laughs> I, I did. It did me. I don't know what it was that there was about. I, there were some places you couldn't blow things up. Yeah, of course there were. But I, I, I didn't really feel restricted in that game. I felt like it was well done for its time. For its time, this is the key thing because it's shit now by today's standards. But it's <laughs> awesome for then, you know. Yeah. Another inspiring moment um, was in uh, Final Doom, which was an add-on pack for Doom, which c contained some levels that had been created by third party. They, they weren't created by id Software. Um, and it was one that made me realize the kind of scale of some of these worlds that were very simple. I mean, the, the Doom level format, there was, there was no like slopes or anything like that. But there's um there's one level and I can't remember the name of it, but you're in a giant hangar. Um and it just goes out into space um on this planet. And it just the, the sense of scale in that made me it was one of the first times in a game where I thought, wow, this is a huge area. And it's a bit like what Sam said about the, the this kind of Zelda experience. I've had similar things before with things like when I think we've all talked about this Final Fantasy VII when you leave Midgar for the first time and suddenly you are not just in a city which was huge but you're now in a world which is huge but the actual sense of physical scale the first time I felt that was was um, was in Doom, Final Doom Well we're all talking about awe-inspiring stuff now when when I read Mythalor's suggestion instantly I thought of game development or, or some kind of development in, inspiring you know something that's inspired me to do something mm. rather than just go oh, you know actually make me do something <laughs> you know what actual inspiration is you know someone inspires you to write some piece of music or whatever um there was, there's two that uh, two two moments that i've thought of as everyone's been talking uh, the first one was the deus ex demo the original deus ex demo when mm. i played that game that made me want to write a game like that or that made me want to design a level like that Bear in mind, I'd already put some maps together by then. And that neatly brings me on to my other one, which is the first time that I ever played UNR DM1 in Quake 2. The first time I played that, and I was like, this is awesome, this is an awesome map. Where'd it come from? And I found out that somebody had created it from the community, and I was like, what? You can make your own maps? Oh, that's, that's a, I mean, I know you did Doom stuff before that, I think, didn't you, Lou, or, or something? Uh Duke Nukem was the one I did mapping mainly on, yeah. So I, I started in Quake 2 with my mapping, and, and I did, you know, I've, I did maybe three maps in all. Only one of them's ever survived, and we still play it occasionally now. But, um, yeah, I, I when I, that, that was inspiring. That inspired me to make my own map, and uh, it's kind of... I remember that map well. It still looks good today. Uh, UNLDM1, yeah. It's, it's yeah, a very, yeah. very good-looking map, yeah. Very well designed. Did we not meet Spog? Oh, we might have done. We went to a lot of LAN parties back then, though, didn't we? Spog was the guy that made it. Small pile of gibs or jibs. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, there's two other moments then. Uh, what? Sorry, one other moment that I've thought of, and it's it's a. I've said it a million times before. It's when you leave Midgar in uh, Final Fantasy VII. That is the next one here. That is that is awe inspiring. <laughs> Did you just say that? Yeah, I said that. He did. He did. <laughs> right. You were too busy thinking. I was writing stuff down. Yeah, sorry when you said that. But anyway, yeah, that, that's I, I share that one with you then, Lou. Sorry, Sozard. In terms of inspiring, I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff. The Doom stuff, actually, I did really want to make Doom maps, and I used to sit in school with grid paper in maths class and draw Doom maps on the grid paper and plan them out because I couldn't make them. I didn't have a PC. <laughs> I had the PlayStation. I used to dream about making maps for Doom. And the same for Duke Nukem as well. And there's a lot of inspiration. I, I think the main inspiration for me when, like, before I got into programming was designing maps for games. And it was from seeing some of the stuff that had been done in games already, which was amazing. Duke Nukem, Doom, uh, Unreal. Can I, can I include something that's kind of meta game stuff? It's not within a game, but it's no. to do with our gaming experiences when we were... We were back. I'm going to say it anyway, so screw off. Um, <laughs> quite a lot of the clan websites and the um, things like um, clan base websites was clan base ours actually? No, clan city was ours, wasn't it? Clan city um, was ours. Yeah. Cla uh, so clan base was an old, um, old school kind of uh, league website that that Quake players and 
Unreal players and CS players used to use to to play league games with other clans across the globe, and uh, the, the websites, the fact that you could log into them, this is one of the first one first experience of kind of the uh, the interactive web application that I ever had was through gaming websites and so the clan base. A lot of the other clan websites that we used to, all the clans we used to hang around with, they'd have like private areas, and that inspired me to get into web development. That's a good one, actually. Yeah, I think I, I, well, it was. It was where it's. I mean, I, yeah. the first website I ever made was a clan website for Dark Empire. Same here. First <laughs> website I ever made was 1997. <laughs> I've still got about seven versions of the SQS websites that we made, and they're all horrific. Apart from, I think maybe version seven that I worked on with you, Lou. The one where I took a screenshot and it said re um, in red, and it was actually in green. Do you remember that? I, I said do, sort yeah. of like it was highlighted in red and I'd actually highlighted it in green because I didn't know the hex got, code for red at the time. <laughs> I've got the, um, you can actually still visit clan-sqs.com, clan-sqs.com. We should pull up see. all the old old websites on there. If they even that. work. If the, if the, I think I've got Perl scripts in version one somewhere. I don't even know if Perl will run on there. No, of course oh, it will. Of course it, it will. It's be run, yeah. Idiot. Anyway. So yes, inspiring, inspiring moments. Is that is that enough, audience? Are you happy got, with us? I've got one more little one, and it's not it's it's an inspirational thing, just in terms of it inspired me to, to have a vague interest in something that got me didn't get me through school, but something I used to do a lot in school. The first um, Ten Chiefs Delta Assassins game was the first game that I played where I actually like thought ninjas were cool because um, I played like shinobi and stuff, but there's nothing really stealthy or ninjutsu about that. It's just a bloke having to wear an adapt outfit throwing ninja stars at people. <laughs> There's no stealth involved. Uh, Tenchu, I played before Metal Gear Solid, so that was my first proper like stealth game as well. And it was just made them, it made the ninjas look like awesome badasses. And then I kind of got a little bit of a thing for it. I then started, I read um, uh, Ronin by um, Frank Miller, which is not really about ninjas, but it's got that whole cool sword guys with poses and chopping people's heads off and stuff and then started doing just doodling that all over all my school books and getting into that kind of wondering where you're going now. overly overly violent like ridiculous I thought you were going to say that that's, when you, that's when you killed your first teacher when you found out how to do it <laughs> stealthily <laughs> stepped up behind him and was like you're just out of my family <laughs> <laughs> Right everywhere. That, that just made something else <laughs> pop into my head as well. Another inspiring moment from computer games. Um, I think it was from the the manual for Super Metroid. The, there's a there's a picture of um, Samus Aran kneeled down on one on one knee with a with a hand with a gun hand up like that, and uh, she she's just just sat there. It's just a good picture of her, and I drew that for my GCSE art um, exam. You did art. I did, I did it. But you know how I did it? This is how bad it was. Right? <laughs> I, I wish I still had it. I wish I had... To. It wasn't that bad, right? But, sorry, the whole thing wasn't that bad by the end. But the, because I... I don't even know why I did it. I think I, t I, I did the scale wrong. But I started it on an A4 piece of paper. It ended up on 16 bits of A4. It was ridiculous. <laughs> it's like I'd sellotaped it all together. And I, I got an A for it, because it was really good, but it was like, I didn't, it was GCSE, so I had to do it, you know, it wasn't something I chose to do. Did but, you get an A for it because it had to be seen from space to be appreciated? <laughs> I don't know, to be fair. You watched a, a lot of Art Attack fair. at the time, being Neil Buchanan. <laughs> this is a big Art Attack! <laughs> it could, could well have been, but I remember drawing it, I, I, I shaded it in with... Um, uh, with shade, shading pencils. Construction equipment. <laughs> I, used to, I used a digger to move it around the school. Yeah. No, but that, uh, that's another inspiring moment, so shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Was it zero suit, Sam? Or was she wearing the full armour? Um, it was full armour, yeah. It was the, the, yeah. the orange and red stuff. The, 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 the normal armour, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll have the manual in the attic somewhere. I'm pretty sure I will. Mm. Cool. I think it was from the Super, the Super Ma Metroid one, not the, not the Nintendo one. Hmm. one of them anyways. You know, that's that is the most articulate way of the exploding list that we've had so far. We haven't spent the entire time going um and nah. Well uh, done, I think Shank Mithalo. I think that was a great question. Yeah, that was a, a good question. Yeah, nice Before we move on, Pim, have you got anything to throw in the in the pot? There, have you had any? What have you been inspired by? <laughs> Well, Metroid is actually one of the first 3D games I played, so it pretty much inspired me in terms of level design, how complex it was, 
So you mean the in, the Metroid, the three D version of Metroid, not the, the yeah, so that was ex- the the Wii version, wasn't it? No, actually the the uh, the DS version. It's, oh, it's the I first, played that. Oh. Yeah, I, I'm I'm pretty young. You can tell, but. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're we're old school gamers. Unfortunately, we've got. But I think we've got about 10, 15 years on you. Oh god, that makes me feel <laughs> I would, really old. I wouldn't have called that. You look like Chuck Norris. I would have thought you'd been kind of a. <laughs> well, he's um, he's got a lot of Jason on his uh, on his. Um, I noticed that. Yeah, thing, yeah. And he says it says twenty one on there, so or 21. something like something's that. Twenty one looks like Chuck Norris. Your future is going to be very bright, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> Said I've got eleven years on you, unfortunately. I know I do don't look it look like look it, but Come on. You look like you've got about Show twenty years on him. <laughs> Let's move on to the news sections. Section. Sections. Yes. We have a fair amount because uh, we didn't do the news on Saturday because we had uh, a very talkative guest who had a lot of opinions about a lot of different <laughs> games. So we um, we we spent the entire time talking about just games instead of moving on to the news. Um, so, Magic Leak or Leak? The- magic Leak! <laughs> <laughs> this leak magic- is magic! My magic's leaking again. Shut up. <laughs> magic Leak, yeah, basically a video came out last week showing um, a wetter workshop. These are the guys who did Lord of the Rings special effects. What they think, I guess, uh, augmented reality could look like and work like the- and what they basically showed was uh, someone fighting a load of robots in an office this um, this looked just like the uh, the kind of the concepts for the HoloLens stuff for the Microsoft HoloLens i.e. completely unreachable at the moment yeah yeah I agree I think the problem is that it's showing <sighs> A lot of the elements are there, but what it's showing is things which look solid, and you don't get that with pass-through augmented reality. You're always going to get things which look ghostly and see-through because they have to be projected onto a see-through screen. Mm-hmm. You can't project a solid object onto a transparent screen. It doesn't work like that. So, yeah, I'm not entirely convinced from this. I think this was basically done as a way of... I think just like the... Um, the, the, the is it the hollow lens? Yeah, Microsoft HoloLens, just like that as a way to drum up some attention for it. Oh, not yeah. just what it could actually be like, because I don't think it can really be like this. So the thing is that they that this that it's it's a double edged sword that because it may get them lots of hits, lots of views, lots of interest. I mean, Wet Workshop have got a name for themselves anyway, so why are they doing that? And you know, why do they need to do that in the first place? But secondly, it's if they can't deliver that, it's just going to flop. You know, mm. that the people I, aren't going to buy it just because it. Uh, looks like that on the video i'm very skeptical about these kind of things because what these videos to me look like and i'm probably being overly harsh here it's the equivalent of me going oh what if i had this game right where i could like literally have like the whole universe in it it's like right that's a really nice idea but can (laughs) you actually can it is it it possible to create that well Well, what they've got there is a nice (laughs) idea but yeah it looks nice it looks like a freddy one video to me though it's like it's nice and all have you got some good effects on there but it's not real it's just a video that someone made like they've not it's not given any details really about what they've actually got working at the moment have they no i think there's probably some more news articles somewhere with a bit more info in it but yeah seeing as though i didn't put that news in there i haven't done any research on it like a lot of concepts and mock-ups um it's not in any way realistic it's kind of a a pie in the sky look at how it will be it's like you know when you watch a movie and in a movie they've got a video game in it like um i think it was hackers had this version of um, wipeout in it and it was completely ridiculous and and over the top and Mm -hmm. nothing like a real game it's like that it's like here's what it kind of could look like sort of if you're in a nightclub wearing (laughs) <laughs> wearing rubber suits and you're a hacker and everyone's beautiful and tattooed and that's not really what anything is like including the game yeah I- i'm not convinced by it no not yet uh, i think i think I-, I think augmented reality is more realistic commercially uh and technically than vr at the moment full-on <laughs> vr mm, i think vr is making much better leaps than it, it is. VR is however i mean we know that oculus keeps getting put back we know that we keep getting delays on these things, and then we we've got all these all these companies releasing all these essentially v- verbal clickbait, um, trying to get us to 
you know, trying to get to get up to vie for the attention of the VR market. However, this list leads us on to the next news story very, very neatly. Um, the 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 ex Gears of War boss, I can't remember his name, but it's in the article that I shall put post, um, is, a, is a VR skeptic. And basically, his comments in this article is basically what I've been saying here for a while. I'm not saying with the same person or in cahoots or anything like that. It's, it's just interesting <laughs> that someone in the industry has that kind of view as well. And again, it's just one person. It's just his own personal opinions. But um, you don't you don't hear... I don't hear too many high-profile people speaking out about uh, uh, VR too much. Gabe yeah, Newell? Uh, uh, he's not sceptical. John Carmack? No, 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 speaking no, out, against, speaking it, out against it. I mean, sorry. Right. Of course, there's people, there's proponents because they're com commercially they need to make it a success for the investment. You know, they need to make a return on investment. Pim, have you used VR at all? Have you used uh, an Oculus Rift or anything like that? <coughs> well, we've got this, uh, an Oculus Rift at the company where I work, and right. I got to try it once. What do you think of it? Well, I got to try it. Uh, well, we have this event in the Hollands where we read all the taxes for every year from this is going to change, this is going to change and they had a 3D camera there and you could play it over the internet on the Oculus Rift right, so, you okay. could, so you could just basically be there using the Oculus Rift sit, sitting in the middle of the audience and it was pretty cool <laughs> right, but they used it for the, the budget basically the, uh... <laughs> it's very strange <laughs> Yeah, I saw actually. Um, I've recently bought a new car. I'm about to take delivery of it. And when I was at the showroom, they had an Oculus Rift there, and they were using that to demonstrate the new cars that they got in, which I thought was nice. That you so you could sit inside the car and look around. I I think it's perfect for that kind of. I think it's brilliant for everything but games. Yeah, I think because we are so <laughs> far. No, no, no. Hang on. Let me let me qualify that. I, I don't mean every game. I mean it's brilliant for Elite Dangerous, you know that kind of thing. It's brilliant for flight sims. It's brilliant for car driving games. Mm. Um, but anything that I want to play, third person action games, uh, first person shooters, first person step parkour stealth games, you know, th it's not going to be any good for it. I don't personally don't think it's going to be. Yeah, but it, it's, it's going to be a while be, until it's good enough for it. Anyway, it's never going to be a catch all thing, though, is it? It's it, it is a peripheral for a specific use. It's not made for playing board games or whatever yeah <clears throat> i i, I yeah. think it's got i said i definitely think it's got a lot of uses and in the future it will be but i think the first commercial release is not going to be widely commercial i don't think it's going to be um I don't think it's going to be viable as uh, in terms of price for one for <clears throat> vast majority of consumers and for i mean it's going to be the price of a console we had, we yeah. had a, few, a guest on the other week saying that he thinks, he thought that, that, that people would buy it at the price of a console. I disagree. I disagree entirely. I don't think that that, I don't think, p p gamers like us, it, hardcore gamers, yes, but you're not going to get your it average starts, joke. Though. It's like mobile phones or, or any other technology that's been adopted recently. It always starts out with the enthusiasts. It always starts out with people who are willing to spend £500, £1,000 on a, a piece of tech because it's cool. And then, then the it, price it will come down. Yeah, if, if the price comes down, it filters down to other people. Other people get to use these cool people's kits, like you guys have all used my Oculus Rift now and got your own opinions on it. That sort of I notice how you, I notice how you slightly said, because you, cool you've got guys. one, you're a cool person. Yeah, yeah I'm, a, I'm a cool person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to deny it. <laughs> But you, but you know what I mean? It's like the, the, there are always going to be early adopters. There are always going to be people who get the first versions of things. But I think that there's so much work going into this at the moment that it, it can only be something which is going to be quite big soon. But then again, I say that and I also see the same thing happen with 3D TV and that hasn't taken off. That, I know that... many people who've got a 3D TV who watched it once and decided they can't be asked with it. It's one of normal TV. Yep. Yeah, I, I couldn't yeah, be asked. And to be fair, everyone. I bought I bought one because I was I was in the market for a new TV at the time, and I thought, oh, it's only an extra five hundred quid. And that's all <laughs> at the time. That's all I thought at the time, and I was like, well, I might as well save up a little bit and get it, you know. And I I, I do re I do regret it because it is a waste of money. I don't want to bloody charge my glasses up. The amount of times I use that television, it's uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. 
I, I'm yeah, I'm I'm a bit of a sucker when it comes to that. But I did wait for quite a while. I was buying it, I think, on the downslope. <laughs> I've got to be honest with you. I didn't buy it at the height of its <laughs> uh, of of its need. But now you don't even get tellies with 3D now, do you? They don't even, uh, they don't even know, they're yeah, still there. Yeah, they still do them. I think they're more focused on 4K and um, and stuff like that, Smart like your higher TVs. resolution. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. Uh, Kojima, at last I have my my friend in Metal Gear back, and I can talk about Metal Gear Solid without no, everyone going right. Is that it? <laughs> yeah. So uh, Kojima, now this this was a, a week ago. This was a Kojima might be leaving um, Konami in December uh, after Metal Gear Solid Five has been released. However, it seems to have transpired that he is going to leave after Metal Gear Solid 5 and they're shutting down uh, their their streaming services which uh, which he's part of a big part of um the next game hasn't been announced but they have nodded towards there being a game after Metal Gear Solid 5 without there will be without Kojima being involved now what do we think about this Sam well um sorry you guys if you're not into Metal Gear you okay. know Board to say this, but I think it's it's it'd be interesting for him to actually make good on a promise that he's made on every Metal Gear say, since Metal Gear Solid 2 because he keeps saying it's his last one. I think he said Metal Gear Solid, no, he didn't say Metal Gear Solid 2 was the last one, but I think he might have said 3 was and then 4 was and then because he kind of was trying to do it like I want the series to carry on, but I don't want to be the creative director anymore. And then once the, the new guy started making it and he wasn't happy with what they were doing to his property he was like oh for christ's sake i'll just do it again he said after metal gear solid 4 that was the end of that story snake's story solid snake was done and now he's come back with this one and he's now his now stance he's going with is i'm closing the loop on the on the past solid this past snake and the future snake you know there's the big boss who's the father of solid snake he's closing the loop with the fifth game of metal gear solid 5 that's the his idea he's running it off now there's already been a, a successful spin-off in metal gear rising which was a completely different genre of game it's not a stealth game it's an action slash em up game with a cyborg ninja which is really cool and enjoyable not a metal gear game really but just happens to be in the same universe which i'm i was fine with yeah, yeah. that stuff that stuff will definitely go on um because that game did pretty well for itself considering people thought it was going to be an absolute disaster and it actually turned out to be pretty good and i'm pretty sure it sold decent numbers as well um they will do another metal game now they could even do it in the same universe because i think um another franchise that's gone this route mass effects is making another game but it isn't going to be shepherd as the main hero mm. you can do it a game set within your world that you've set up and do a different thing with it have a different character totally liberate yourself from the previous law as it were or not the law but you know the previous uh, characters that you have to adhere to they could do that i mean it's the problem the, the reason that they don't do that very often is because it's a risk that's why they don't do it um as mm -hmm. we've talked about before ips are really important to big triple a companies and to little indie studios i mean you know i mean uh, we've got they've got more um flexibility in an indie studio but when it comes to the triple a's all the all the big wigs care about is the, are the numbers and they know that the um what's his name Den dennis miles what's his name from assassin's creed the dude desmond miles desmond miles and, and miles and all of his uh you know all of his ancestors they all sell you know that's why they're keeping that that kind of thing up. <laughs> the the ancestor thing is a bit of a twist on the normal thing but you know they've got rid of connor um from assassin's creed 3 because he he disappeared but it's the same thing you know any ip will keep continue to sell and they have to mm. shut it down at some point or try moving on and quite often it fails but you can you can do what you want with it i mean the grand theft auto series i mean they've had the same creative team as in dan hauser and the other guys that the, the rockstar north guys who have been it from day one mm. but each game is its own autonomous unit really i mean they have references to the other games but you don't have cj in more than one game he's in one game yeah. You don't have Tommy Vercetti. You have references to them, but they're not in the other games. You can do that with any property. And I kind of think that's... A, if they're going to continue Metal Gear, I'd rather them do that, even though, you know, Metal Gear Solid, Solid Snake is in the title of the game. You could do a stealth espionage with an alt-history world game with a, with any other soldier who's brought up or any other character who inhabits that world. And it doesn't have to be Kojima can do it. I'm sure there are other young developers hungry for a chance to get a bite into something now. 
100%. What would be, I would I would kind of prefer if if anything they take a development team maybe from Metal Gear and start a new IP with them have the confidence to do that they don't know as we just as you've already said IPs like Metal Gear or Halo or any of those big franchises you slap that name on the box it's gonna shift copies millions that's of what, copies that's, as well that's, that's what they want they're at, you know you know that Konami are more interested in that than they are in producing a quality product 100 percent, yeah and you know, the, the, the kojima it's true. Is, kojima the thing is the thing with kojima is that he's on both sides of the fence he wants to sell a quality product but at the same time he he also knows what sells you know at the at the executive level as well he's been he's been in it for so long now that he you know he understands that but uh, yeah, yeah, to be fair, you make good points. I'm, I'm, I'm on your, there's, I'm there's, on your side. There's a double-edged sword to this. I mean, I, I, obviously, I'm not a massive fan of the Metal Gear Solid franchise, but it does open up a question about the control that a lead figure like Kojima has over the game like that and whether his influence in terms of his, his, his perfectionism is outweighed by the fact that he's kind of stuck in, in his own mindset. There'll be people mm -hmm. who want to take that game further but there'll also be people who want to introduce ideas which might might dilute the series or dilute mm -hmm. the, the, the the you know the the, the recipe that the game has. Mm -hmm. So you've got two sides of the problem there. You need someone who is a maniac who wants to control the game and get it to be absolutely perfect with a singular vision. But you also need you need like new ideas, and just, you can't get that with a despot or a, you know a, 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 a dictator. Just ex just hire show. me. I'll do it. I'll sort it out. But you're you're a dictator, and that's well, not a uh, bad thing. I'm not. I'm not a. a um, I'm. I at the moment, right at work, I am. I am technically leading things, but I'm also taking a lot of feedback from people and and thing, and that's a, that's the that's what you kind of need to do to be a leader or a dictator and I, I Kojima I imagine, imagine does that but he also probably puts up a lot of barriers to stop as, as you said stop diluting the his ideas and it is his baby and this is the, I think this is the main point is it? is it is it going to be the same thing without him look at what happened to Metal Gear Solid Rising yeah. it's a good game in its own right if you look at highly successful different. if you look at highly successful things they tend to be driven by like in terms of creative endeavors they tend to be driven by a single highly perfectionist driven controlling person like Steve Jobs with Apple like James Cameron with with any of his movies basically like he's Michael a maniac Bay. yeah well not like Michael Bay <laughs> um, <laughs> although interestingly like like um, like, like his producer though. like his producer um, uh, Jerry Bruckheimer Yes. Who's actually a very controlling character, even though he's only a producer. His he leaves his mark on the movies. Oh, he totally does. You can tell a trade for a cabin movie. Yeah. So, <laughs> so th there are good things to that, but also you, you still need to be able to, uh, introduce new ideas. So, I'm I'd be interested to see where someone, uh, someone who loves the series of Metal Gear Solid, goes with it. Mm. Remember that Kojima is is like the prime minister, though. Essentially, if you think of, if you look at what the prime minister is in England. He is just a face, really. He's a he's a pretty, not pretty face that that kind of pushes the ideals ac across. They're a spokesperson. They don't make the decisions. It's a committee that makes the decisions behind them. For all we know, Kojima could be that. He could just be giving us the impression that he controls everything. We don't Do you know. Do you believe that though? Well, I don't know. I don't know. The more you the think way about scripts it, scripts are written. Seems like he's pretty much in control of that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the actual writing of the script in the Metal Gear has that for every stamp on it. For every successful game that they release, he will get more control over it because they know that he's the winning formula. He's the part. He's the rest. He's the part and of the recipe is, that's making it work. It's, this is why they keep offering Konami, more money that, to come back it, and do it again. Well, I was going to say, especially for Konami, they totally rely on him because the Metal Gear uh, franchise is one of the only really, really strong franchises that Konami still got. Silent Hill had a bit of a resurgence with uh, that PT. Um, thing they released which was really interesting and different for them but they, that's been a dwindling series there's not been many konami series that have had that like knock it out of the park this game will get nine nine or ten out of ten reviews and sell shitloads of copies every metal gear game has done that they've not had a big cash cow like that and so they kind of do let him do what he wants i think when it comes to that series they say well we know that you're the guy that actually makes us a load of money gets us some accolades that we can really do with because what other franchises have Konami got going for them that are big, uh, well-received franchises? Really, I can't even think of any. I can't Silent think Hill, of any. 
uh, is around, but it's not Resident been a big Evil. deal for a long time. That's no, Capcom, that's Capcom. That's Capcom. Uh, K. Yep. C. If anybody's got something to Twitch chat, please enlighten us. I've, I haven't got it all at the moment because uh, oh, still got to be a bit. Castlevania. Oh yeah, okay. But then Castlevania was in the wind for a long time, wasn't it? It's been up and down with that series. It's not a guaranteed success, Castlevania. Not by a long shot. No, no. So that's my point about Kashimi. It's a bit different. Like you got someone like Shigeru Miyamoto. Probably mispronounced that. Sorry if I did. He was uh, the sort of creative director on the on the early sort of wealth of, of Nintendo games, right up into the N sixty four period, if I'm not mistaken. But he has since stepped back to be more of the Jerry Bruckheimer style producer who has his stamp of approval on things, but he doesn't develop the games. He's there's teams that do all the Pikmin, Zelda, Mario, whatever franchise you want. I don't know if Pokemon is one of his as well, possibly, I don't know. They have their own teams, but then he's like the overseer of it all. He's not he's not in the nitty gritty of writing the script and coming up with the core ideas, the what mechanics he wants to put in, I don't think, anymore. So that's like a way to go with it. You could be like an overseer, which is what Miyamoto seems to be at Nintendo these days. He's like the grand overseer of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Contra is another series that Konami are famous for, although that's really not it's taken not a, off. It's not a successful um, series. Remember that big Contra game that came out last year? No, because it didn't no. happen. Yeah, it's a cult game. <laughs> that's what it is. I um, like it. I'm, I'm looking at them. There's lots and lots and lots of different games that they do, but Dance Dance Revolution, you know, that kind of stuff. It's There's a lot of beat <laughs> mania, pop music, pop and music 13. <laughs> Metal Gear is, the, is their big hitter. It is their big hitter. Yeah, and then followed by Silent Hill, probably. Yeah. Then followed by Castlevania potentially, but Silent, but Silent Hill and Castlevania have got a muddy history, whereas Metal Gear's got a pretty goddamn sterling history, really. Regardless of people that don't like it, it's done. It's been a very, very successful franchise uh, consistently. Yeah. yeah, I'm not going to deny that. It has been <clears throat> incredibly successful. Yeah, I didn't realise they've done as little as they've done actually. The way I see it, the way I see it is where is when Konami leaves of, uh, <clears throat> when he leaves the studio. Studio, they will still continue to make the Metal Gear games and they make it just as they were because they sell. That's yeah. possible too. I mean, yeah. don't don't forget that he's been he's been leading a team as well for a, a long time, and he'll have he'll have seniors below him that he'll be passing this information down to. They will be briefed to keep the formula the same. So I don't think when you think about it, I don't think there's going to be an issue really, is there, with new Metal Gear games. There's going to be some purists that go, I'm not playing that, I'm not buying that if Kojima's not involved. I won't be but one of them. I'm, I'm a Metal Gear fan, not a Kojima fan, you know? But when, yeah, you play, when you play the first one that <laughs> hasn't been helmed by Kojima and it's almost like a Metal Gear Solid game but not quite, They're all different, that's going to wind you up and no, that's not, what winds up not. a lot of people with sequels. Metal Gear if Solid 5 game. Metal Gear Solid 5 is totally is going, to, well, Ground Zeroes I've played that so I can say, I can speak for it it's totally different from 3 it's totally different from 2, which is totally different from 1. They're all very different they've all got similar tropes in them they've all got similar ideas, they've all got terrible cameras, for example <laughs> you know, that kind of thing, but they're, they're still you know, they're still Metal Gear Solid games but they've all got slight differences in them this open world mechanic is something they, they always said they probably wouldn't do in Metal Gear, but they're now doing it and I can't wait for it, I cannot wait I probably spend my life playing this game when it comes out, and I'm, I'm still Still haven't made my mind up. I'm going to get it on PS4 the day it comes out, or I'm going to wait a couple of weeks and get it on PC and enjoy myself more with it. Because <laughs> I think I will enjoy it more on PC. Okay. <clears throat> Both. So, okay. Yeah, next. That's that. <laughs> yes. Next news. Next news item. Um, PS4 is getting a Gears of War three remaster. No, I it's not. Even... It's getting God of War three. God of War three. Oh, you know what? I even knew that it was God of War three, and I said it in my head before. <laughs> right? Yes, God of War three remaster. Um, I'm not that bothered about this personally because I haven't played three Anything. yet. I only played one. Um, like I've said this before, we talked about God of War before. Have you played the God of War games at all? Tim? No. Um, I just I, I've said this before that the first game from a from a narrative perspective, and I know that narratives aren't what defines a game. I get that, but it was quite a story driven game for its type of game. It's the only one that had a proper story to it that made sense. God of War three was the most technically advanced of the games, but it's not the one that I like the most. I still think the first one's the best, even though it's the oldest and 
most rickety looking, but it still looks pretty good actually. It's got a nice aesthetic to it. The third game was very beautiful and all that for its time, but it, it played okay and it was for a game that was already over the top, they made it really gratu- gratuitously violent to the point where it's like, alright, we get it, it's hardcore and violent, like you don't have to be this <laughs> over the top with it. I understand that Kratos kills people, but it, it really <laughs> took it to the nth degree, like really overly violent. I mean I like violence, you know. I've already discussed this before. I'm into my violent media. I find it fun and cathartic and silly a lot of the time, you know. And so, uh, do a remastered version. I'm not interested. Um, not bothered. Hmm. Okay. And I'm enough. a fan of God of I'm, War. I'm glad you were here to have an opinion like because I, I wasn't going to put it in the document otherwise. <laughs> I wasn't going to talk <laughs> about it because it's, you know, it's one of those, if you haven't played the Gears of War games, you, you're not going to be that bothered about this. God of War. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I've, got the, I've got the PS3... Um, God of War 1 and 2 remasters because mm. I never bought the originals and I wanted to play them through but I still haven't got it out of the cellophane and I got it seven <laughs> years ago something like that Jeez. yeah man my <laughs> life fun. is horrific hey yeah. as I say it's good fun though definitely the first the first oh, two the are fun. actually really genuinely really good fun I borrowed yours and I played the first one all the way through and I think I started right. playing the second one um so I've got three as well, but I've got the original through PS3 version, which is a HD kind of remake anyway, or it's a HD game anyway. So maybe yeah, it's seven twenty p. It's the equivalent of the release, The Last of Us remastered, didn't they? So they just upgraded. They'll have upgraded the textures and stuff for it, won't they? Honestly, there won't be that much difference. There really won't be that much of an improvement. I don't think. So. Yeah. Right. So moving on to the next one, then this is uh, something that might interest Pim with um, with our. You know, with you being into your Zeldas and and I assume other Nintendo games as well, potentially. <laughs> um, Nintendo NX has been announced with a brand new game changing concept. No other information has yet been released on this. Again, this is all very very clickbait, but this is a new console that Nintendo are bringing out, <laughs> which will be next generation. That's what I the NX will stand you've for. I reckon you better control it with your genitals. Maybe. Quite is it too soon? The Wii U's not that old. Is it? Is it? Is it a handheld? Is it a home console? It's a, any it, information? Apparently, it's a full home console, but it's got a brand new concept for gaming. Now, I'm thinking <laughs> at the moment, my bra- my brain immediately goes, "This is going to be a VR driven console." I'm thinking wearable as well in some way. Yeah. yeah, because at the moment, everyone else is going on about it, and Nintendo haven't even dipped the toes into that that sea. Well, they have well, they, the Virtual Boy. I was going to say they I already know, have. They were, seriously, I mean, in this in this resurgence, I don't mean oh, Virtual they Boy. They were serious about it when the Virtual Boy came yeah. out. It just failed. Yeah. I if know. anyone mentions Virtual anything at Nintendo, they get killed instantly. <laughs> Someone just shoots them in the head with a Captain Bolt gun. <laughs> so it's ne- it's next generation reality. That's what they'll be calling it. That's what the NX stands for. Something. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of people speculating on this. Uh, I have, I've read that article, but I haven't read it. There's there's droves of other speculative articles out there and uh, there's new stuff coming out every day people going oh it could be this it could be that i just think it's probably going to be a, a, a vr a fully vr experience that's my one and only thought on it i would have said that nintendo probably wouldn't limit themselves to that kind of narrow scope but thinking about the wii and how it limited itself to kind of a narrow scope with the gimmick of the motion control stick the nunchuck or whatever Wiimote. Uh, maybe they could do that. Uh, I liked the Wiimote. I liked the Wii. I thought it was a great little console. It's I, a lot I of fun like with it, friends. but I, I just thought I thought it was a very narrow scope, but it turned out it wasn't as narrow as it seemed it was oh, going to no, be. No. It is. It is narrow, but they still sold more than PS3 and and the Xbox 360 I, 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 combined. Sales, sales figures mean nothing to me because the fact is they sell them cheaper and they sell the, the sort of consoles that the, like our previous guest said, there'll be multiple in a household. Maybe, yeah. You know, that's half the price, at least, of the other consoles. Yeah, there you go. That's going to sell them, isn't it? Okay. So, I mean, it's, yeah. it's a nice little console, it definitely. But I, quite, I know quite a few people that got one, played, like, a couple of games on it, and then it's just gathered dust on the shelf after a bit. But all consoles do that, eventually. I mean, I know you have your, your, your game, you know, your workhorse console you know your ps3 your ps4 your main one i got a ps3 and a 360 last gen and my 360 was my workhorse i've hardly played my ps3 but the the exclusives i did get on my ps3 i was i was more than happy with paying the full price of the ps3 for it 
And the same goes this gen. I've only got two, three games on my PS4 so far. I haven't even bothered with the Xbox One. Probably won't even be a bother with it because I'm I've turned on to my PC gaming again now. I'm really turned on to it at the moment, especially with the indie market as it is. So yeah. Mm. So yes, the 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 NX and anybody else think anything else is going to happen then? It's not going to be more metal filings being shot into your face. <laughs> if, uh... I think what I, 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 it's all speculation, is it? But what I would say about virtual reality with Nintendo is because we've already discussed this whole third person thing. All of Nintendo's franchises that are big franchises are either third person or top down or isometric in some way. They don't. That be it would mean. <gasps> All, all their all their games that they that they do all the time, Zelda, Mario, blah blah, fucking blah. We all know the franchises. They're gonna have to talk, if they're gonna do the virtual reality route, if that's what we think, they're gonna have to rework all of them. Now that could actually breathe some life into some franchises that, quite frankly, have been getting a little bit. I've just, just... thought about how the Nintendo user <laughs> will react to that. It'll be like, it's a me, Mario. It's a me, Mario. <laughs> oh. <dear. laughs> oh. It'll have to be an advert if you're like, wahoo! Like, <laughs> you know, like, and then there'll be a story in the newspapers of someone who fell off a cliff trying to jump down a pipe or something. So, <laughs> and they've deserved it as well for being stupid. What about looking at it, at it as a, a more, again, family orientated um, VR experience or an augmented reality experience or, uh, I don't know, holograms or maybe something. Something Fucking lasers. Lasers, yeah. Lasers. Or maybe, maybe they'll. <laughs> I don't know, maybe they'll make it... Maybe maybe they're going for a full hot, full hog kind of like serious gamer console this time around, maybe. But their it, market but, isn't that, is it, thinking about it? It isn't, no. but it'd be nice to see that again, because they haven't done that since the Nintendo 64. Even that wasn't a full-on... Uh, no, sorry, the GameCube. Mm, yeah, okay, but that was that didn't sell as many, <laughs> did it, as normal? It as... And that's when they started to think maybe we need a niche here rather than a, a general market. Yeah, because they're not going to compete with the PS3s and the 360s of the world. They've got the market now for, for first-person games and FIFA games and, you know, all the other general mass mass marketing. Well, you, uh, you saw what games. happened because it was Sega and Nintendo and Sega tried to stick to the doing the console thing and just didn't adapt to the, the way things were going. And, mm. you know, now they make games cheap games for nintendo who would have thought it mm, yeah any any other speculation then on what this new console is gonna it do? will be white <laughs> because nintendo are racist and it's too close to their previous console for for it to seem that legitimate unless they're talking about it they've got plans to release it in the next five years or something like well it's the wii u seems still seems like new to me it's so it's, it's too soon isn't it it is fairly new the Wii yeah. U. I mean, I haven't even got one yet. That's how new it is. Usually, I, I grab a console when it comes out that I want, and I do want the Wii U. I just can't be asked with it at the moment. I can't be asked with said consoles right Wait now. Wait for Zelda. Like, like Basically, that is it. Yeah, <laughs> that is it. That is what I'm doing. Um, anything else for NX? No, no not other, really. no other thoughts, ideas. No, I'm not mm. interested in it to be honest. Nintendo. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Dying Light, this game that keeps popping up in the news that I still want to play. Um, it sold 3.2 million copies in 45 days, which is a pretty good thing. And they're an indie developer. Both clap. They're a, an indie <laughs> developer, Techland. And I only just found out that Dying Light initially came to light. Ta-da! Um, from... <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, it, it came to light from PewDiePie playing it. Oh, well, that ties on, into another related article. It, it does, yes. Which I, I was intending to move on because I knew we weren't going to talk much about this one. Um, but yeah, it's 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 sold th this many copies, and it's it's pretty it's pretty good for an indie indie developer. And I know Techlander are like a they're pretty big for an indie developer now, but I, I, I think it's kudos to them. I have to be honest with you. No. Okay. Yeah. No, no interest. Fair no, shot. Don't yeah. care. I mean, it's just it's just not a game that I'm particularly interested in. I mean, good good shout on them for having a successful thing, but the game itself doesn't interest me that much. That's why I don't have to say about it. Was it, they, they're the same ones that did um, Dead Island, aren't yes, they? Yes, yeah, yeah. And I, I again, I didn't know that at the time. But I said well, that, apparently, it's just like Dead Island, isn't it? But a bit bigger. No, it's 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 much more freeform than Dead Island, I think. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, mo moving on from the. Uh, uh, the PewDiePie thing. Um, I think it was announced today or yesterday. PewDiePie and an Anita Sarkeesian have been included in the the Times. T was it top sixty? 
top 30 uh, most influential people on the internet. Now, I don't dispute this. I don't dispute this. I agree. They are probably the, the <laughs> up there in the top 30 most influential people on the internet. But for fuck's sake, honestly... <laughs> This is Pin. like this is like getting twerking in the dictionary. It's just <laughs> devolving the human race, isn't it? Pin, and it's easy, and I think it's different. I, I'm talking about PewDiePie specifically here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's Pin, doing as, as, a, as a continental European. Can you please explain or, or just help us with PewDiePie and just like That's not... explain him, please? <laughs> or can you go and hit him for us <laughs> since you're closest? You're, you're slightly closer than we are. I... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> slightly closer. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of him? Do you do you, do you follow his uh, YouTube channel? Uh, I only follow his Twitter for because uh, I like his Twitter feeds, but I'm not really into YouTube at all. Fine. I'm just I'm just using YouTube to listen to music actually. <laughs> Fair enough. I said I I don't. I but don't I'm following him on Twitter. I don't have a problem with his content on on Twitter uh, on uh, YouTube. You know, I don't watch it personally. I've watched a few of his videos, and it's not done much for me. Uh, but I'm not going to sit. I'm not one of these people who'll sit and complain about it because it, it's my choice to watch it or not. But I will complain about the fact that he's influential, <laughs> that he's of influencing he people, that he has it. he has control over the masses. I know he he's got his, millions of subscribers and viewers, but yeah. celebrity. I know. Yeah, he's a celebrity. He's got. He's got. Yeah. A, he's got his own sub community. That's his fan base. You know, know. They'll, they'll have. They'll have their influential things. Will be. I, I don't watch his show, but I'm guessing he's got his own little little in jokes and catchphrases. That is he be part yeah. of that? He's a YouTuber. You know? Yeah. He calls yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. Bro and stuff. Yeah. The, the most thing. The most I've seen of him is actually the South Park episode that had him in it. Because <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if people have been keeping up with that, but they actually were. For South Park, not that I want to get into that too much, they were quite tame on him because he was a guest on the show. Uh, they kind of did make out that a lot of the stuff that he does is daft, but they kind of weren't that. They weren't really the biting satire that I expected of him. You know what it but is? Anyway. It's, not, it's not him. I, I said I've no problem with his content or him as a person. I, I, it's fine him releasing that. What I have a problem with is the human race in general. <laughs> Everybody oh, else. Right. It's all the people that rave and over this. And this is a problem I have with celebrity in general. I mean, I you know I'm a fanboy of certain things, but I don't rant and rave about it. They don't really influence me that much. They're, they're just entertainment. That you You've know. You've just that, been talking about Hideo Kojima. Yeah, and... that's, I'm just saying I'm a fanboy of some things, but I don't I don't <laughs> idolize the man. I, I, in fact, I criticised him no less than fifteen minutes ago, saying he that. I, so I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, what's the word? I'm objective, objective, subjective, yeah. objective. I'm objective okay. about about most things in life, and I don't think I'm too hypercritical about things either. I like to think I analyse the situation and come up with a, a valid argument with. But the, it's just the fact that it's just entertainment. It's not influential. It that's is though. That's but if people like it, then it is. Yeah. C culture is influence. That's how, you know, he's part. He's part of. He's part of like popular culture, and that is influential on stuff. It's. I mean, it. It comes down popular culture being influential comes down to the fact that it, you could say the same argument about the fact that dough is part of our common vernacular now. Dough. We all know that. That's that's from the Simpsons. That's pop culture influencing our language and yeah. kind of how we relate to each other by that common experience of watching that show. It's the same with PewDiePie. I don't know what his influence is on the internet, other than he's got a lot a lot of fans on it. It's successful might be more accurate. I don't know where the influential part means. That's what I'm really saying. Means. It, that, yeah, What's the influence that he's had? But the, influ he, the influence well, for, for things like, I said, like getting twerking in the dictionary, that, that is obviously has been influenced to a point <laughs> that, that some <laughs> committee has made a decision to get this word in the dictionary because it's in common use. But... That's how language works, Chris. Just leave yeah, it. Deal leave with it. Out of the dictionary. It's not. It should not be part of the zeit zeitgeist. You know, it should not. It be. is. That's that exactly is. what the zeitgeist is. It shouldn't yeah. be. That's my point. If I don't like it, it should not exist. <laughs> Listen to me. It's the same. The thing. The thing with the dictionary is that the old argument is that if you were to bring someone from two hundred years ago up to now and to show them the dictionary or the way that we speak, even some people like us who might. Um, consider ourselves to be, if not particularly well-spoken, at least not completely 
unable to construct a sentence. They that's would a, that's say, a nice way of saying not retarded. Thank you. Yeah, I'm trying to be diplomatic, I'm trying to be diplomatic here because yes. some people can't articulate themselves as well as Apologies we can. Apologies to the retards a- out there. Other dis- disabilities are available. <laughs> but we're, yeah, other than retardation, that's no disability, <laughs> medical condition, retarded. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, but we're not, we're not as articulate as other people. But you bring someone from 200 years ago and the way that their language was constructed then, they would say, you've butchered the English language, you've, you've bastardised it and made it to the yeah. lowest common denominator. Mm-hmm. It's just the way language works. It's, it, it devolves and evolves in equal measure. The new words come about and old ones get pushed aside. I think and, this is why people only live, like, up to a hundred years, because after that, I think they don't think they can cope language. with it. No, I don't think they can <laughs> cope with it. They can't keep up the lingo. Yeah, you get you get so years. you get so misanthropic. The older you get, you know, the older you get, the more you the more the more you hate the world, and the more you hate things that got new things that come out. <laughs> it's like so you really, you're saying that you basically you get to hundred years old and you realize that you don't call people moon calves anymore. <laughs> and decide that's it. You're just going to pop your clogs. and you implode basically. Yeah, yeah. you just implode on yourself. <laughs> That's it. Done. Yeah, <laughs> clutching, <laughs> clutching a nineteen thirties dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Twitch was hacked, hacked this week as well. Um, everybody's account was reset, and that's why we're having particular issues. Uh, this might be why uh, Twitch has been having issues over our last couple of shows as well. And uh, uh, hello, by the way, someone just said hello to us in the chat channel who just popped Hi. in. Uh, Iron Iron <laughs> Zephyr Hyde Zephyr Zephyr Hyde Zephyr Hyde, um, how are you? You tell us how you are. We're fine, thank you very much. Um, we're just on our last section of the show. It's uh, we've got a few more news stories to go, and uh, we we'll be closing things up. But yeah, just uh, saying, Twitch got hacked. We, uh, we've basically every API key and every OAuth key and everything that plugs into all of the different applications needed to be reset. I thought I had everything right, and then when I actually clicked stream. It didn't stream <laughs> earlier on today, so I think I hope we're live now, and I'm hoping Twitch doesn't keep having problems because I'm I'm very close, very close now to to moving moving us over to Hitbox. Cause well, that, may, that also brings up another new item in there, doesn't it? Which is the uh, the YouTube gaming focus overhaul. Mm. Mm. So basically, uh, YouTube are gunning for Twitch. That's the Gamespot article title. Yep. Uh, so it looks like basically YouTube won in on the game in action. Twitch has become a huge platform now for game streaming and things like that. That sort of stuff is. It's also good viewing. It's also worth noting as well that Twitch is now uh, to those who don't know, Twitch is owned by Amazon. If you're a Twitch viewer, you'll already know that. Someone will have told you at some point. Um, but it was it was it was going to be bought by Google, who own YouTube. Um, it was going to be bought by you. And th- to those of you who predate the days when YouTube was owned by YouTube, not Google, yeah. Google tend to buy quite a lot of companies up these days. And, you know, th- they stopped uh, a couple of years ago when they tried to buy Twitch because it was becoming the gaming giant that it is now. They um, they were stopped by antitrust laws in America. So they actually physically said, no, you can't have this. Let someone else have a go, basically. I did not know that. I didn't no. realise that's what it was about. No, so now, YouTube are basically starting to go, right, if we can't have Twitch, we're going to try and compete with it. They've already got their live events thing, but as I explained a few weeks ago... <laughs> Which works beautifully. <laughs> not at all. I couldn't get it working, and I, you know, I'm a fairly technical, savvy person. It was, it was a mess. <laughs> and the fact is I have to set up a... You know, I have to set up a, an event every time or something, or I don't know. I don't get it. It's, it's rubbish, and it didn't work when it did go live. So, um, but they're saying that they're doing a complete overhaul. Now they haven't given much detail of this yet, as they probably shouldn't. So it's interesting to know that they're coming on the bandwagon because YouTube is consistently, apart from all of the content ID stuff and the lawsuits and the DMCA notices that you can get on there, I think that they could potentially provide a much much better service than Twitch do and Twitch need to up their game yeah I'm a big fan of YouTube I know that Pim doesn't watch much YouTube but it, there is some great content on there it for a long time has been basically somewhere where you put your funny cat videos but now there's some quality original programming on there it's uh, becoming so I would like to see this happen and Probably. it's becoming quite it's quite public as well it's easier to search it's coming up in in search results on all the all the engines you know all the search engines and it's it's now it's it's now integrated into the internet it is synonymous with the internet in fact 
quite often yeah. you'd hear old people going, oh, when you were on YouTube the other day. No, I wasn't on the YouTube. The internet I was on is a series of YouTubes. Yeah, basically. Well, it, it's the most it's the most reliably consistent like video streaming website really going, isn't it? Really, in terms of if you want to watch a video of something on YouTube, like a trailer for a movie or whatever, or this, that, and the other, you, you're guaranteed to have it be sort of reliable, more or less, be reliably workable on YouTube. Whereas other streaming sites you might try it aren't necessarily as reliable. I use it all the time. It's one of my frequent time-wasting websites. I don't use it too much. I do tend to follow a few, a few accounts. And it's only actually in the last year that I started to follow people and had a, my own YouTube account only because I needed one for this and for my uh uh, indie dev studio when i was uploading devlogs and i had a few other development videos that i uploaded my personal development videos actually do a lot better than any of my other stuff i've had thousands of views on my personal dev vids but i've had we have hardly any on the residence arcade ones um, or, or on my devlog well, my devlogs get a couple of hundred hits or something is it but... because you get your penis out on your other videos i do i do yes you just sit there just looking at the camera <laughs> just like what people like to see on the dev videos is that I'll, I'll sit there, I'll shave my beard off, and then I'll regrow it on cam. On live regrow? Right, right, right there. I would watch that shit forever. Forever. Is that on, is that on before or after the paint drying video? It's, uh, it's, it's during. You watch the paint dry behind me, and I'm, there's like, I sit, I sit here, and then when I move my head, there's no paint behind my head. That's how good it is. See how, how interesting I can make my videos. <laughs> but anyway, um, what was I talking about? We were talking about YouTube-focused overhaul thingy, wasn't it? Yeah, so I'm quite excited about it. I don't mind. I, I have no problem with antitrust stuff, and, and I know people get the knickers in a twist about it, but when there's a, a company like Google that do tend to provide good service and don't tend to make too many fuck-ups, you know, there are a few... They've made a few over the time, but they don't tend to make that many. They don't like, leak passwords like, everywhere like every other bloody company sent, tends to. I like I like YouTube's approach <clears> to things. I like the fact that YouTube genuinely seemed to rectify mistakes. Like when the content ID thing first popped up on YouTube, basically your video was taken down. Now you're given an option. You know they've made it workable for all the parties. And it's I like that. workable, but still questionable. Unfortunately, it's not. But it's perfect. still better than the video just basically being banned and you basically not being allowed to upload videos or whatever. They've made it a lot less account, harsh. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, th I still have some problems with YouTube and how it handles it. But to be fair, when you've got that much content, and they they'll have, are going to what's petabytes? They'll have petabytes of information petabytes, on there. Probably. Yeah, it's yeah. be ridiculous the amount of stuff that they think, have on there. Think about bro. all the videos that are just like a thing for ten hours. Like yeah. how yeah. many of those? are so <laughs> just just the epitome of time wasting. Just just we upload two hour videos <laughs> once or twice a week, you know, and that's just us. Yeah, yeah there's there's. And it's free to everybody to use as well, apart from the advertising side of things. Um, you can buy things. You can you can watch movies on there, uh, yeah. and then pay for it. Like you can pay two fifty for a, a film or whatever. Yeah. I've never done, but it's quite a nice option to have. Didn't even know that. I, I don't yeah. use YouTube to its full extent because I said I'm I'm so busy. I don't tend to have much time to to waste. If you know what I mean I, on things. I, I don't have any TV. I cannot watch TV physically at the moment, and I basically watch everything on YouTube now. I. I'm really enamoured by YouTube's program, and I think it's great. I'd, it's um, bite size as well. You can like, there's people who upload hour long videos, but there's people who upload ten minute videos, which is really really good to watch. And yeah. So you just fit it in throughout the day. Just just watch a nice little video. It's mm. really good. Yeah. So that's us. Other other websites are available because we've been uh, sucking YouTube. But don't bother with them because YouTube's there. awesome. But YouTube's yeah. better than them, so just don't bother with them. Please, okay. please let me make more than five pence though on there through through ad revenue, because literally that is I've I've had an ad account for close to five years now I think, and I've made about five pounds, and that's through all of my channels. That's that's Resonance Arcade, that's my Dev Channel, and my other one. And I, I, Chris, work harder. I know, I know. That's the thing is, I'm not a YouTuber though. I just put up videos for the things that I do. If I was a YouTuber, I'd be uploading videos every day, and that's the way you get more viewers and more subscribers. And and plus, I was very, very, very late to the train as well. I think if I did dev videos for a living, I probably may, could potentially make some money on it, but that isn't what this podcast is about, so let's move on. Yep. Ooh, that was a dirty face then, Lou. Ooh. Yeah. I've got no pants on. Ooh. Dirty. <laughs> Right, Bloodborne was released yesterday. 
although Sam doesn't seem to think so. Well, actually, I, look, I, I was going to say this. I looked this up, and apparently it's released in Europe on the 24th, but it says UK and Ireland on the 27th. Oh, no, I ran, I ran up, well, I, I know. I ran up a game shop that said they'd have it by tomorrow. Um, unfortunately, I'm working all day tomorrow, so I won't get to pick it up, so I'll get it on Friday. Um, but I, I, I did wait for the reviews before I confirmed if I was going to buy it. But, I'm, I mean, I, I'm invested in, in what these guys do from software. Demon Souls, Dark Souls, uh, just great action RPGs. And this one looks like they've made a spirit. And it's again like the leap from Demon Souls to Dark Souls. It's a spiritual successor. It's not a sequel. It's a new game. And they've added quite a few new mechanics. They've changed the combat and changed the mm. way that you fight and everything. You can't walk, you can't tank yourself through it. You can't armor up and take the hits and then just hit back. You've got to move and be fast. And I like that. You've got to be, you're making it more. Um, you have to be more aggressive, whereas in the other games you could be very slow and tactical and shield and then wait for your time to strike, whereas in this you've got to get in there and get it done. I, uh, I awesome. it, it appeals to me, but then again, Demon Souls, Dark Souls 1 and 2 have both all appealed to me, but I've never actually got into them. Um, mm. I keep trying, but I think I think this too might be hard. one of... It's not that. It's not that at all. It's, it's... It is for me. I think they're way too hard. Fair enough. <laughs> I, they are hard. I'd quite enjoy that. I think. I think, maybe potentially, there's no there's there's no difficulty setting on on them, is there? Uh, there is in Dark Souls too, in that you can there's certain things, there's certain items you can pick up, or certain guilds, uh, sorry, covenants you can join that have game effects that you can do. There's certain things you can, there's there's optional items that you can. If you don't want to make the game easier, you don't use them. It's that mm. kind of game. Where there's no so there's no difficulty settings. It's all in game stuff that you can choose to adopt or not. You can also make the game harder. There's certain things like there's the bonfire save system. You can put a thing in the bonfire that makes all the enemies harder. Things like that. So right. you can sort of choose your difficulty in the game rather than on a menu. That makes sense. I like uh, it when they integrate the, the difficulty into the game with something like changing weapons or changing items mm -hmm. that you've got or that kind of thing. Also, um, the online co-op thing that they've had where you can summon someone to help you is entirely optional. You can go through the game one player if you want. So, yeah. So I think I think that I may get for my PS4. I'm getting it. Even though even though it might get a PC release, which is something that is kind of a rumor at the moment. Amazon's uh, French website has uploaded a PC kind of pre-order on there. Yeah. Sony let the the uh, uh, the what you would call it. Uh, forgotten the word. Cut out of the back. Uh, they let the thingy fall. The uh, the copyright. They lost. Copyright. The, they let the copyright run out. Um, on it, on it, on it. It's like it's not even come out yet. You've let the copyright run out. They've done that a couple of times. It seems really stupid. Yeah, um, we were talking about um, not not Ico, the, the the new one, the Last Guardian. Yeah, the Last Guardian, which apparently is not. We again, we were talking about this on a few shows ago. Apparently, it's not been cancelled. Uh, it is potentially still being made. God knows how long it's still going to take them though. It was, give it, a, up it. it was supposed to be a PS3 game, even that one, wasn't it? So the a console behind at this stage. No, I, I, I'm I'm still up for it if they make it great. Yeah, again, so, I've got so many games that I don't really care about delays. I, I, Metal Gear Solid could get delayed for another two years, and I, I wouldn't care. I'm not I'm not chomping at the bit for it, even though I really want to play it. You know, I'm I'm not asked one way or the other. Okay, um, Star Citizen hits 78 million in crowdfunding. Seventy-eight really? million dollars. Yeah, I don't think it's um, crowdfunded. I, I, That's the as biggest far ever. As games go, yes, I think it is. Yeah, for games, I mean, specifically even enough. even uh, exploding kittens, that card game, that hasn't made anywhere near that. But that was on one crowd. Exploding kittens made the most from one crowdfunding campaign, <clears throat> whereas yeah. this has this can't be just one campaign. No, this it's has not. To there was a Kickstarter, across. and then there was the, now there's its own campaign, but. What I'd like to say is that I don't think you're going to get a hundred million pounds worth of game out of it. Oh, no, definitely not. No, <laughs> it's ridiculous. But it's it's not about that, is it? It's people pre-ordering the game. It's people paying for stuff that is basically just speculatory, based on the yeah. fact that there's nice concept art and nice ideas. I I'm not a fan of this mode of funding. Not to this extent. I think it's almost but like selling dreams. They're well, also getting game. a bit. They're also getting a bit carried away. I mean, it looks nice to what we've seen. I don't know too much about it. I just know that it's basically the entire world, in you know, entire not world, entire universe. Entire universe in, in the Cry Engine. Oh right, is it? So, yeah, there you go. So straight away, there's a problem. Mm. 
<laughs> yeah, mm. I'm not so sure about this one, but we'll see how it goes. I well, think it's even... going to make a lot more money than his game. No, definitely, definitely. I think uh, uh, that the thing is, 78 million. That's more budget than any game but, has ever mm, had ever. Surely, not really. No, 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 no. no, no. Games what have gone over 100 million. I'm sure. Um, it's, it's just for inflation. I mean, uh, it's, uh, Final Fantasy VII still kicks that ass. It just for inflation it was over 100 million budget. Uh, just thinking about marketing and stuff as well, which this yeah, game I think... will be using. The market uh, budget was normally bigger than the game. If all the I was going to say that a lot of that seventy-eight million is that going to be part of the marketing? It, 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 is that it the whole be. funding for everything? Yeah, yeah, that's because I'm pretty all sure the revenue. I'm pretty sure Metal Gear Solid 2's budget was over hundred million, all told, and that'll probably be marketing as well. But yeah, it's happened before. Fair enough. I, I seventy-eight million just sounds ridiculous for to me for it a is. game. It for is. a game, it, it just it, it's like it's, is it. Game. I didn't even know games made that much. I, I must. I'm still living in a box, surely. <laughs> uh, Destiny's budget total, um, adjusted for inflation, was five hundred million dollars. Jesus oh, Christ! No. <laughs> I, I didn't know it was that much. That's right, development well, cost it. alone was one hundred and forty million dollars. I take it back. Then I think I have no problem with seventy-eight million. Then if that's if that's what they're <laughs> making, because Destiny's a piece of shit. <laughs> In comparison, it is in comparison to again. I could play an indie game and have more fun out of it, and their budgets are nothing like that. Check this out: Final Fantasy VII was forty-five million dollars to develop and a hundred million dollars worth of marketing. There Over was twice a lot as much of for that game. Yeah. Ridiculous. So yeah, these are the kind of figures that you're looking at for AAA stuff. Okay, fair enough. Hundred million though. Okay, That's yeah. taken the breath out of me. That I have to be admit, I didn't. <laughs> I mean, I knew films were ridiculous, but Jesus Christ! Only 140 of that was development, so you're looking at a huge marketing budget for uh, Destiny. I'm going to have to up my game with you uh, are. Subnet. I'm you're going, going to have to start having cheaper sandwiches and just like plain coffee <laughs> and I need saving more those staff pennies. first. Apart from <laughs> me, me and one indie guy, um, one designer and a composer <laughs> and a. And a uh, Sat the composer artist. and do it yourself, you've got a base, haven't you? Yeah, exactly, I'll do that. <laughs> I'll sort that out. Uh, there's a new <laughs> PS4 update coming out. Um, I thought it was noteworthy because it's got a few new features in it. Um, there's a new suspend resume mode, which is basically hibernate that we've got on PCs, which I think is just going to have more problems than it's uh, than it's worth. There's also going to be 60 FPS remote play. Uh I don't think any of us are playing with remote play as it stands at the moment, but this basically means you can play it on your Vita at 60 FPS, I think, something like that. No one's got a Vita. No one's got a PS4. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a PS4, and so Sam, so shut up. More people um, have got PS4s and have got Vitas, then, shall we say? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the, <laughs> the idea of remote play is, is cool. Um, th I said I quite like the, the streaming thing with, with Steam. Um, but there's, you know, there's inherently issues with it in in general. A uh, you know, bit of extra lag, bit of input delay, that kind of thing. But I don't know. I think they'll get there eventually, and it'll be. It's all about bandwidth, isn't it, and throughput. And when we get to a point where it's not a problem anymore at all, I don't think we'll have we'll have issues with that. There's thing the, the, they've added new, better accessibility stuff on there. I don't really know that much about it because obviously I don't don't use that part of it, but. For people who are interested in that, that's uh, that's coming out. Uh, there's also an auto <laughs> screenshot every time you get a trophy that gets uploaded and shared onto your <laughs> PSN thing. What if your trophy is like for staring at female characters' asses? Doesn't matter. You still get a screenshot. I, I would imagine that that's an option you can turn off. I don't know. Well, it doesn't say <laughs> that. I'm, anyway, I'm really probably. worried about the, uh, the, the the privacy of this because like, a lot of my achievements may involve staring at people's asses. That's Just fine. saying. Does That's it, the program. It's not illegal. Putting that in the game was an achievement, isn't it? Yeah, but I don't want to be sharing that automatically. Yeah, that's my thing as well. I might, I might want to. Yeah, you might want to get the achievement for the sake of having a laugh. You don't necessarily want everyone that knows you to see it. <laughs> you did that because there was yeah. well, there was an option to share your trophies <laughs> on on Facebook with your PlayStation Three. You could say Sam got a trophy playing whatever, but I. That's that what everyone off. wants to know about on Facebook. Yeah. I know exactly. You want to know what you're I doing in a game for about a well, day, I'd, and then I'd rather, I'd rather share that than fucking people showing a picture of the porridge they had for breakfast or whatever. But anyway, <laughs> that's a that's a discussion for a different. That's for Instagram, time. not Facebook. 
There's People also still um, put it on there. There's also a new uh, search your Facebook friends feature as well, which yeah, is yeah. yawn, lay yawn, you know, we've, we've had they've that had, before. That, I can't believe that, that isn't already on there, I have to be honest with you. And uh, back up and restore, which again is no one cares about, but they probably should at this stage. We're getting so invested in digital infrastructure that it's becoming quite an important thing. All this cloud That's backup good. stuff and, you yeah. know. Okay, whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me paste that right, in the chat. I said I, I forgot. I was getting so bored by that one while I was talking about it that I don't know why I even put it in the list. <laughs> Elite and Dangerous. This is for Lou, this. Um, yes. If you'd have played it more, you had the chance of winning $20,000 or £13,000. Yes, but the amount that you had to play it. Can have I you, read out these figures yeah, here? Yeah, go on, read the figures. So you've so. got to reach... 10,000 unique star systems. No, the one, this is one oh, guy. Oh, this is what this one guy, what yeah. this one guy did. I guess what his he name had 9, is, the 1%. Kills. He traded 835,000 tons of goods and he played for 1,029 game hours. Now, what game lad. hours related to real hours? It's real those hours. Actual, oh, those it's are real actual time. hours. Yeah, there's a real t the game is in real time, yeah. Or that part of it is anyway. Yeah, the reaching 10,000 unique star systems bit is the crazy bit for me. Um, I must have I must have reached about thirty, and I've put a good few hundred hours into it. It's it atrocious. is insane. That's basically asking someone to explore spend, the universe. Spend all of the <laughs> like, what one thousand twenty nine game hours? What's that in days? That is a lots, uh, lots of days. Too much. Too many to play a game. <laughs> it's. I, you know, I used to be I used to be a, a, an addict when it was when it was you know when it came to down to games. But these these days, they're very much secondary to everything else that's going on in my life. That's I can't. Ne nearly forty three solid days of I was gaming. Say it's forty odd, isn't it? Yeah. So. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Ten thousand star. You must have like hyper jumped. You must have got loads of uh, loads of fuel or whatever you need, and hyper you, jumped to all of those dead quickly. You won't have enjoyed any of that game in time. Put it that way. To 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 accrue that kind of statistic kind of set, you won't have been enjoying the game. You'll just be constantly jumping and trading and killing and not. And he got nine thousand kills as well, which you didn't mention. Yeah, I did say nine thousand kills. Nine thousand kills is ridiculous. Yeah. There's a lot, of, lot of dead people in space there. I, 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 a dog fight in Elite Dangerous will normally last five to ten minutes. Right. So how the hell he was doing that? I have no idea. Proton he must be just crashing into obviously. people. Maybe he cheated. You know, they, they actually vetted them. They actually checked the people who were in the running for this to make sure that they hadn't cheated by checking the logs. So was so, it? I, th I don't think I've read the full article. So was it a prize that they said you have to hit yeah. these Yeah, basically it's called the, the triple elite. Basically, you've got to reach elite in the three categories of being elite, which is combat, <laughs> trading, and exploration. And when was and the game was released first... properly? Uh, the, the beta's December? been out for a while. December it was released. Okay. So someone's reached triple elite status already in... He must have a star field March. burned into his retinas. Yeah. <laughs> He must, have, he, he must have the most yeah, epic probably. neck beard. He can't have slept or eaten or, or anything else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anything. Yeah, 40, 43 days. Yeah, pretty much. I, I've I've got a bit of envy. I have to be honest. I wish that I I <laughs> had the patience and the time to play any game or any games that am, amount of time because this guy could not have a job. No. No, he's good. If he full time, that was his job. That, since December. Yeah, either he was making money on on Twitch doing that, or he he had very rich parents or something like that. You know. But why would he be do if he was so rich? Why would he be doing this to win? No, well, no. Some people don't do it for the money, do they? Some people do like achieve because they want to achieve. Commander their goal. Tequila, his name was. No, it was um, the one percent. Oh, won the exploration award. Sorry, yeah, sorry. The one percent. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Let's close yeah, the show. Whatever. That's all the news that we have, and we've we've overrun by ten minutes. So I shall leave uh, Pim to uh, pimp anything that he's pimping. Give us any web addresses for anything that he might want to let us know about <laughs> for uh, for any projects if you have <laughs> anything. Uh, well, if you want to know about me, you can probably best check out my Twitter, mm -hmm. Pronoob Thirteen. Pro noob, isn't it? Pro noob Pro, Thirteen. Pro noob yeah. Thirteen, yeah. Pro Noob 13. Cool. It's under Rib's name. 
<laughs> and if you are interested in Resonance Arcade, you've enjoyed the chat show, um, and Twitch hasn't been too much of a bugger today, you can follow us on Twitch, as as you probably already know. You can follow us on Hitbox as well, which <laughs> I said I am very much considering moving to full-time because I'm getting really sick of Twitch's shoddy um, delivery. And we're on Twitter, forward slash Resonance Arcade, and YouTube.com, forward slash Resonance Arcade. And we hopefully now Sam has in internet back. We'll be able to finish off the Metal Gear Solid stuff. Hopefully, so <laughs> yeah. one day. Do you think? Uh, I need to double check where I'm working, but I'll give you a provisional. Yeah, I probably <laughs> okay. can't do Monday. We don't Sorry. want you anyway. You yeah, sit well. there criticising. <laughs> I just want to finish off. Someone this has to. We've we've got about ten minutes of gameplay to finish. Someone has to. Well, there is there's, there's more than that. The right. fanboy spaffing. Yes. Well, th th I'm not spaffing though, I'm just sat there going. You, you're sat there hating life. <laughs> snake, 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 snake. <laughs> you're just sat there, sat there running around massacring every single soldier and dog that you can see in the I, game. I've got proper, like, proper shakes after I've been playing these games because I'm not playing them like I normally would. I'm like, oh, I want to go back and do it again. <laughs> Might even play Metal Gear Solid 3 again and try and get all of the frogs or something. Just for a laugh. Don't <laughs> For shits and giggles. You won't enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. Um, so yes, thank you very much for everyone who's watching. Thank you very much to Pim for coming on as a guest. And we shall see you Monday or next week. Catch you later. See you later, guys. Bye. Bye. Whatever.